Hello everyone! Welcome to It's a Long Story, a uh, place where we roll dice, we tell stories, and we create magic. Uh, we are so happy uh, to to be here and have you here. Uh, we are here with our lovely crew, the specifically the OGs, the original uh, group, uh, the Mongoose crew. Everybody, take a look. Wave at the everybody. Take a look at the camera. Wave and say hi. There we go. Hi. 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 Very excited <laughs> for tonight, uh, if not a little bamboozled. Um, uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, if you are uh, watching us for the first time, uh, hey, welcome. Uh, this is a D&D live play group. Um, uh, one of four, actually, in the campaigns of the Tales of Imea uh, on It's a Long Story, which is the channel that we're on right now um uh if you are unfamiliar with that uh it is basically it is four uh separate campaigns sort of kind of uh of four parties existing living breathing killing uh and and being awesome in the same homebrew world uh at the same time uh so it's a lot of fun uh we occasionally have crossovers things like that um so it's uh it's a good time. Uh, so uh, before we begin tonight, uh, we have a couple of announcements up top. First and foremost, as I've been saying for a long time now, and I can't wait to eventually be at a point where I can stop saying it. We need players for an upcoming campaign that we are uh, working on. This is our Candela Obscura homebrew campaign. Uh, for those who are unfamiliar with Candela Obscura, it is a cosmic horror game designed uh with some uh some extremely uh creepy and cool horror themes uh but uh, a lot of heavy rp stuff very introspective um low on the rules high on the uh creativity and the rule of cool um as well as one of the easiest dice systems i've ever worked with um we have our own version of that that we made earlier uh uh about six uh, five months ago now time um in september uh that is called shadows of the north shore uh taking the same concept the same lore the same game design with candela obscura and putting it in a real world setting uh slapping it into the year 1901 in a little place that is near and dear to my heart north shore of massachusetts um which is uh my old hometown my old my old uh, stomping grounds, uh, as well as Lori Ants. Sorry, mm. as well as Lori Ants. My my yeah, camera's yeah. mirrored. Yeah, that one. Um, me. <laughs> hey, hey, was that your Mark Wahlberg <laughs> impression? Yeah, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, yeah. What are you doing? Oh man. Say hello to Cthulhu for me. <laughs> Say hello. Cthulhu, you have a lot of tentacles. <laughs> I want to say that I was doing an impression, but I wasn't, and I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, it's okay. This intro has now fully gone off the rails with the uh, everybody thinks that everybody from Boston sounds like Mark Wahlberg. Um, incredible. Uh, yes, so we are looking for players for that. So if you're interested in uh, checking that out and possibly joining uh, our crew as... Uh, we are trying to get that off uh, the road. We have one player. We need at least two more to be able to make something happen. As soon as we have something happening, honestly, as every other campaign has been go has been going, as it starts to run, that's where more people start to kind of jump into it. So, uh, so we need you to grab the reins. Um, and if you're interested in what that looks like, we did our playtest in September. It is up on our YouTube channel uh, under the playtest uh, under the playlist in our channel uh, that has uh, Candela Obscura on it. Um, so please check that out. I put that uh, in our private chat for um, uh, for our YouTube and Twitch. And then also, if you're watching on YouTube, just in the video description as well. Uh, last but not least, this month, and uh, uh, I'm calling it now, this month and next month, uh, we are going to be doing our... Um, uh, we we are taking a break from the mini campaigns that we've been doing for our like drop in drop out sort of stuff for people to, to go into and uh going to our one shot day so every saturday and sunday we have one shots that are running um if you are interested in checking that out um this week uh this week i think i messed up and i put silver brine twice uh but hey cool uh we're actually 
we're I think we have four in Saturday and three in Sunday, so we're actually doing pretty good on that. Um, come play so on we, Sunday with me. Yeah, come play on Sunday. Uh, like I was gonna say, yeah, actually perfect, uh, perfect cue into uh, you'll be uh, playing in a game that I will be DMing, and who knows, maybe you'll have a couple other players here who might be into it, uh, or might be in the game as well. Um, might be into uh, it. Might be into it. <laughs> Hopefully everyone's into it. That would be weird if there was someone that wasn't into it. But uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, please feel free to check that out. Um, our games are all on the same channel at startplaying.games. Uh, for those who are, are not looking at the chat or whatever, it is startplaying.games slash GM slash it's a long story. Um, check out that and all actually all the other campaign stuff that we have coming up. Uh, lastly, if you're looking to support the channel in any way, one of the biggest ways you could do it. Uh, also, actually, this is the first time I can tell you guys this. Uh, we are now over the 200 subscriber mark. We've officially mm -hmm. gone over. So we did it. We level up now, right? We level up. Mongoose we, crew. Not the Mongoose crew. We as, oh, we as, okay. we as humans level up. I mean, I mean. Uh, uh, <laughs> Lorian, not as excited about that. Oh, all right. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> But yeah, uh, uh, huge stepping stone for us. So thank you so much for those that are watching and subscribing and, and listening, uh, which brings me to if you are looking to support the channel, uh, subscribing is a big way uh, to help out with that. Uh, allows us to be able to kind of uh, uh, allows us to kind of reach out to more people who may be interested in watching D&D live play stuff uh, with uh, with uh, some uh, some pretty heavy RP and fun RP in moments uh, with some wacky, uh, some wacky, but also serious character it's a lot of fun a lot of introspection and uh and uh diving into uh heavy themes uh so uh please uh feel free to do that but also you can uh check out our social media stuff that we have uh, uh from our link tree uh, uh and we are on instagram tiktok and then obviously you know at least one of these we're on youtube and twitch as well um and I believe that is it. So before we begin tonight, uh, we need a recap of where we left off. Lorianne, would you please do the honors? Yes. Oh, God, hold on. This cat. Um, okay. So we found ourselves in Broomhilda's chicken house, which we learned is named Marvin. Um, and so we woke up there after, you know, a hard uh, night. Um, Saren um, tranced and then um, took some time to speak with her patron. She um, asked the, her patron about Gerard and um, basically the connection that they have and seeing if there's a way for her to get her memories back. Um, and the patron can't restore the memories, but seems confident that Saren will figure it out. Um, so Eldrin does her morning rituals, which um, includes communing with Persona. Um, she uses that time to ask about her uh, brother Volmos and learns that, yes, he's in danger. Um, also, the other half of him that is um, dead is also in danger because they're separated and they need to be whole. Um, but it's unclear from Persona on what needs to happen to make them whole, if it means that, you know, the one on land needs to die or not. Um, so Guar wakes up on the stairs because he's so sweet and he wants to be as close to Brunhilda as um, she would allow. And we, I say as she would allow because she literally put up a solid concrete wall so that she would be left alone. Um, he does his morning prayers and reaches out to um, Bahamut and Celeste. Um, he gets nothing from Celeste but does feel Bahamut's presence, and um, which comforts him. Um, Wilbur doesn't have a god or a patron to talk to, so instead he has a dream and is able to converse with Winona through it. Um, we, we learn in this sweet conversation that Wilbur's father um, is, is a little bit more reserved right now and trying to come to terms with his time away from the Grove. Um, and Wilbur and Winona just kind of chat, and it's really nice. And Wil Wilbur knows it's a dream, but also that it's real, um, which he's trying to understand. So then the Mongoose crew uh, begin discussing what to do next. Um, we know we need to go to Dwendelver at some point, but um, it is very dangerous as Guar is a traitor and his father um, is um, basically in charge there. Um, so Guar can disguise himself, which is very helpful, but we also have a wombat that is wanted and, you know, a big voice in the sky that said to bring all wombats to Dwendelver. So it's uh, a, little, a little risky. Um, so we toy with a couple of ideas and um, 
um, trying to figure out if we can find some allies. And that's when Brum Brumhilda shows up and shows us the house um, because she had made some changes to Marvin. She also introduces us to Marvin. Um, she basically made this into just a beautiful home for us all uh, and created a war room and armory and bedrooms. And um, she built it while we all slept. So uh, Guar uh, wanted to go see the armory. So him and Brumhilda go there. They look at some of the weapons um, and um, it's decided then um, that Guar is going to be in charge or going to be the leader. So he, um, he decides that he wants to be called the command. Is it commander or captain? I think it was commander. Uh, you started out with captain, but then I, I wanted it to be commander. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, while that's going on, Marvin, the house, speaks to Eldrin, Saren, and Wilbur. Um, Milo during all this is, is a little quiet, probably because, you know, um, Broomhilda was really upset that he was in her house and read her diary without permission. Um, so that's why he was quiet. It had nothing to do with, you know, someone not being here. Um, so Marvin talks to us and tells us about our rooms that Broomhilda has created for us. And we basically learn that Marvin is always listening. Always. Uh, so, <laughs> um... We get, uh, Marvin wakes up Noros, so he comes up to um, the war table and we start planning. So Brumhilda um, suggests that we infiltrate the Mortimer Ludus first. Eldrin thinks, Eldrin and Saren actually both think that Dwendelver should be um, the last place they go. Like, we need to go there, but should be last on the list since it is the base for Tal. Um, and Eldrin also relays her conversation with Persona to the group um, so that they're aware of the high stakes for her family. Um, so they also discuss, um, so this discussion leads to discussing allies. They come up with a list of all of their allies or people who they can pay to be, um, an ally and come up with a plan of who to speak to. Um, so with that, uh, list all, um, divvied up between everyone, um, we go with, uh, Guar goes in first to speak with, um, well, Guar, uh, Brumhilda shows us an amazing room that's enchanted for the sending spell, basically. Um, and Guar reaches out to Merc, Kroga, and Ewolf. Um, Merc is going to assist us, but for a price. And um, Guar offered him a lot of money, but we're going to get 30 meat shields, as they called him, as they called them. Uh, Kroga um, is also going to help, but only because he likes when the odds are against us, and he thinks that's really awesome. So, uh, so he, Guar was able to also suggest to him that Milo's mother, Rosie, should be his replacement as um, chieftain while he's gone. Um, and Guar tells both of them to meet us um, north of Grifton. Um, then he also talks to Ewolf, who is currently with our friends who we had just left, um, New Moon and Celeste. Uh, Ewolf is kind of on the fence because he needs to keep um, the five-year-old Alyssa safe. Um, and he will not come help but fight unless we can ensure that she will be safe in all this. So we kind of discuss the idea of Alyssa having a safe place in, at, um, I don't want, in Marvin sounds so weird, at the house, in the house, whatever. Um, and, but there's kind of an issue with that because, um, Alyssa is a ticking time bomb. Um, so then Saren reaches out to Huxley and Hagen. Of course, Huxley doesn't respond. Uh, so, but Saren does mention to him their plan and that we want to go after Grinchelli, who he does not like at all. So she's just waiting to hear back from him. Um, we're not quite sure how that works since she's not technically in the room anymore. So, so we'll see. Um, and then she reaches out to Hagen, um, who is in charge of the branches. Uh, the branches will help. Um, Hagen has vowed to never commit a violent act again, but will consider assisting us. Um, he also mentions that we could reach out to an Earth Genasi named Micah. And he also, I noticed in my rewatch, mentions another powerful being who is no longer with us. Could that be Orin? I don't know. Who is he talking about? And then uh, <laughs> Eldrin then um, goes in for her turn. Uh, she has a long list of people to reach out to, but in typical Eldrin fashion, she decides to be selfish and reaches out to her missing brother, Bulmos. Um, she she learns that there is another Mortimer who is apparently torturing him 
and then when she tries to assure Volmos that they're com- they're going to save him and help him and all that, the sending is basically intercepted, um, and an unfamiliar voice answers, um, and um, makes it very clear that um, we better come quickly, um, or else. Uh, so, and that's it. That's where we ended. Awesome. All right. We start this session out with a closed room. The round sort of uh, ingrained wood just all around in this like sort of um, this sort of smaller capacity room. It just looks like a bare room except for the one figure we see standing in the center. We hear a clatter from outside of the room and the door slams open. No, 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 no. What the fuck did you just do? Um, what timing? It's okay. Uh, uh, it's yeah. right. <laughs> um, Eldrin is in a little bit of shock and says, I didn't do anything. I just, I reached out to Volmos. I wanted to make sure he was okay. I wanted to see where he was, if he could give us any information. Okay, great. Hold on one second. You see her uh, rush out of the room, come back in about 20 seconds later. Okay, great. Yeah, Volmos. Not on the list. Not on the list of people. And now we have someone that knows that we're coming. Uh, at this point, you're all in the hallway here. You're hearing this conversation. Uh, you're hearing uh, Brumhilda uh, getting louder and louder and angrier and angrier. Um, uh, as Eldrin, you, f- you feel Brumhilda fully laying into you on uh, going outside of what was agreed. Mm-hmm. You... Oh my gosh, you're such... The world doesn't all have to be at your feet. We all don't need to be kissing your boots on this. You insolent child. Uh, Wilbur is going to interrupt Brimhilda and say... What do you say? Brimhilda. What? Have you slept? I... Tell them. Tell them. Tell them what? No, she hasn't slept. Is that what you want me to say? No. Tell them what you just heard. Who you just talked to. I don't know who I just talked to. Exactly. How did it get intercepted? How did it get... Isn't isn't this a... I don't understand. Oh, okay, so it's my fault. I'm not saying it's your fault. Eldrin, I'm sorry. Who did you reach out to? I, I thought that maybe we could find more information if I, if I, if I reached out to Volmos. I wanted to know if he was okay and to see where he was. And what did you find? He said that there is another Mortimer and then it wasn't him anymore. It was a voice I don't recognize, um, and I, I'm sorry. They know we're coming. I, I. Fuck. He just he's been, he's been alone for so, so long, and and I just wanted him to know that he wasn't. Eldrin, he wasn't on the list. I know that Guar. You chose your own feelings over something that may leave the world in pieces. I 
I, I, I. She just storms out. Uh, Eldrin looks up at everyone and says, I just. He's, he's being tortured. How was, how was I supposed to know it was going? I didn't. It's not your brother anymore. We already know that Tall and whatever else out there seems to be able to inhabit bodies of dead people. It is my brother, though. This body, this this person, it, half of them is here and half of him is dead, but it's still a part of him. And if I don't reunite them or I don't figure this out, then he never will truly be at peace. I'm sorry. I can I can fix this. Let me let me reach out to uh, I can reach out to the the students that are on the list. Uh, Alistair or whatever his name is. Um he might he might have some answers. Either way, we're going to need all the help we can get probably now more than ever. Can you still reach out to the other people on your list and stick to the list? Yes. This is really important, Eldrin. Do you need me to be there in, in there with you? No. Do you want Noros with you? Yes. Noros, Noros. will be with that. Uh, Noros walks in um, and uh, can't help but shoot a guar a look on the uh, phrase, do you need me to stay in here with you? Uh, but he holds his tongue and uh, walks in, puts a hand on your back. And, I know, I know, I get it. I understand. We're good, you can close the door. Okay. Uh, and a conversation goes on. Uh, that has already happened in our Friday yeah. crew. But uh, as we uh, continue on with that, we're going to take this moment to be actually uh, allow you all to uh, role play outside of this uh, as Eldrin is conversing uh, with Alistair and um, trying to reach out to a couple others. Uh, yeah, what do you guys want to do? Well, that escalated quickly. How, how did your conversations go, uh, uh, Saren? Um, Huxley didn't respond. Well, Not that I was expecting surprise. him to, right away at least. Uh, and I already, I told, I told them about Hagen already, right? Yeah. For the most part, but right. yeah, we just have to figure out uh when we need to go get Hagen or um where to tell him to meet us you know I, I think uh north of Grifton might be the best it seems like centrally located sounds good as long as they don't go through it right that's true yes make sure they go around it good point um given what I... that poor child has done to that that place I hope she learns from this. She could be a very powerful ally in 10 to 20 years. I was thinking maybe maybe Hagen would be able to bring Eldrin's all of her stuff with him. Oh, that's right. Not sure if she would love that idea, but... I mean, at this point, I think anything that would cheer her up, she seemed to be in a pretty bad way. You know, for someone so logical, she can be quite impulsive. Reminds me of me a little bit. She smiles a little bit. Uh, we never back down from a challenge, do we? 
No, I mean, they probably knew we were coming anyway. Most likely. Tala seems to be everywhere these days. Commander. Yes. A word. Right away, ma'am. She needs to sleep. I know. I know. Thank you. Wilbur, are you alright? Yes, I have to make a phone call. I know. A phone call? I knew what you I meant. need to make a call. What is a we phone? We don't have phones. <laughs> well, there's the shell phone, but Eldrin... The... Why? I'm, co I'm, co I'm coming! Look, if, if Eldrin comes out, just comfort her. Do your, I know you're good at that. Milo, uh, just... You're doing great. And I walk away. Cool. Uh, you see... Uh... Roll something. Um, you see Brumhilda, uh, looking in a book. The, the Mortimer Ludus was built, um, not very long ago, about f five or so years. Uh, okay. The Mortimer family can be traced back to um, what I would assume to be Grincelli's parents, uh, mother and father both deceased. Uh, the only person I can find is a brother who, not putting a pastor, but a brother who died 20 years ago. Or was presumed dead. Or was presumed dead. Um, could it be an could, Orin situation? An apparition of some sort? No apparition could get through that defense. Whoever was on the other end is an extremely powerful yes. spellcaster. It wasn't... It wasn't La Ahad, was it? The brother would make sense, but uh, we know nothing about this person. We must tread lightly and carefully. I think we should consider waiting. We have no idea what we're up against, and now they do. What do you suggest instead? W waiting until what? We we're already assembling our forces. We continue to get some sort of recognizance, maybe try to... Again, I mean, at this point... Um... You see her kind of like bury her head in her hands. Trying to do any recognizance inside of a school of spellcasters is a nightmare to me, but it's... We clearly can't go in there guns blazing. No, and, and uh, I, I am no good at reconnaissance myself. Uh, stealth is not my strong suit and i, I just don't even see. know uh disguise like a magical disguise whether or not that would work in there i don't know what glyphs are there i don't know uh, uh who's running the show and who's not um well we know what you do need you need rest wilbur said you didn't sleep last night making all this We needed the shelter. We did. So. And you did beautifully. But we need you at your strongest. You are no good to us if you are fatigued. I'm fine. Thank you. Brumhilda. 
I think we need to put our heads together and try to figure out next steps as soon as Eldrin under- is done. I understand that. I also need you to understand I am not saying this to you as any sort of potential partner romantically. I am saying this I am saying this as commander. You need rest because we need you at your best. And if you're not at your best, you are susceptible again. As we all are. Uh, roll me a persuasion check with disadvantage. Okay. And... Okay, that was a, a 19. Okay. I will accept your orders as leaders involving this mission. Do not presume that that allows you to tell me what I can do with my time. I say this as a military tactic only. is lying to himself. I say this is a military tactic only. We need you sharp. I am at the best that I am going to be, Commander. I've most likely beaten this horse to death multiple times. But when I, I, I mean it when I say you are the most powerful being I have ever encountered. And I have no doubt that you are still, at your weakest, the most powerful being I have ever seen or met. That said, you were possessed by Tall. As I was. The sooner we figure out a plan that makes sense, the sooner I will consider that order. Fine. Fine. Uh... Walks back upstairs with the book. Um, Does that have the men's spell in it? No answer. <laughs> uh, you hear, uh, you do hear a voice do uh, answer back. Sorry, sir, were you looking for a specific spell book? I could possibly find a way to retrieve it for you. Um, I don't, I wasn't aware that you were a. Uh, Spellcasts that rely on books. Oh, only the one spell, and I pull out like the the crumpled up page that I ripped out of that book. <laughs> yeah, I just I have it right here. I just I I just I don't know. I was trying to break the tension, I guess. Uh, it's very heavy in here, and a lot of things have happened, and I just I need we need morale to be strong if if we're going to get through this. I understand. Uh. Roll me an inside check. Ooh, that is a 23. 23. Uh, there is a long pause after Marvin, the mansion, the voice of the mansion that you're in, says... I always find that a spot of tea is the best way to calm one's spirits. Perhaps I could brew two cups. I would like that very much. Uh, Your insight. This is uh, a little bit different than how Marvin's been talking to you before. Um, you get the feeling that there is some sort of hidden reference there. Sure. Uh, not reference. Um, a hidden sort of like 
meaning there. Sure. Uh, what is your favorite color? Of tea? No, of the mug. Of the mug. Oh, I thought you said muck. Uh, hmm. Black. Very well. Um, uh, you see, uh, it's a, you're kind of just <laughs> standing in this empty war room. Uh, um, looking down the hallway, you see, uh, almost in a, in a weird sort of like level of people waiting to use the restroom uh just the rest of your party just hanging out in the hallway um after about 30 seconds you uh you find a um uh, you find two steaming hot mugs on the table uh like in a you look away and it's not there and you look back and it's there. Mm -hmm. <gasps> um, one of them is the black and the other one is uh, like a beige blonde. Uh, I pick up both mugs uh, and I give the tea a little, whip, uh, a little sniff. Your mug? Uh, yeah, the, the mug of tea. I give it, yeah, give it a little smell. Yeah, cool. Um... Sniffing your mug, you get a uh, whiff of like a. Um, it smells very like um, like aromatic of like maybe some like hibiscus flowers. Um, uh, okay. uh, yeah, uh, it smells uh, nice. I'm gonna sniff uh, Rimhilda's now. Is it the same? Um, give me a perception check. Uh, that is a 13. Um, no, it does smell a little different. Uh, it's, uh, uh, you get the, um, uh, you get more of like a, like an odd sort of earthy aroma mixed with like some like, like lavender to it. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw the quote. Um, uh, and I, I walk, I, I walk like as, as quietly as Guar can in the direction that Broomhilda went. Uh, cool. So you walk upstairs with the two mugs. Um, all right. Uh, anything, uh, the rest you want to do except for Eldrin, which we'll get to if you guys die. I need to talk to Riley. Uh, so you weren't here and actually this works for Jamie as well. Also, did we figure out the audio thing, Jamie? I think so. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, cool. Uh, yeah. So for both, uh, for both Wilbur and Milo, uh, you are in, uh, just to reference back to it, you are in the, like the, um, the chicken hut, the Baba Yaga hut of, um, uh, of Brumhilda, but it has, it has been altered. It has been extended. Um, you have, uh, several floors, uh, three floors, in fact, of separate sort of areas of rooms. Uh, Brumhilda explained that like we, whoever we gather can stay here. Um, uh, we have a, uh, war room as the like center room that you, you have to like walk walk down to uh, from two spiraling staircases that go up um, the the mansion itself seems to move and react based on the person that is interacting with it um, and you know that there is a voice uh, that is uh, that goes by the name Marvin um, uh, you get the idea that Marvin is a man and actually a pointedly sort of thing to Milo uh, Marvin the mansion can uh, uh, absolutely talk and is uh, recording any and all conversations inside the mansion to Brumhilda. Um, uh, 
Uh, lastly, the room that Eldrin is in right now is essentially what we would call from here on out the sending room. Uh, something that El that uh, instead of sleeping, Brumhilda decided to do all these alterations and included this room as well as an armory um, of just uh, various sort of basic weapons. Um, uh, but this uh, sending room allows uh, conversations to be had with um, uh, as of this moment probably strictly the people that are on the list um, but you can have full conversations with them there's no 25 words or anything like that um, so yeah uh, so Wilbur you're aware of that as you're kind of waiting and um uh, okay. Uh, Eldrin. First off, you reach out to Alistair and you get a... Uh, go ahead and roll me an insight check. I'm going to give you kind of a, a, a possibility to be able to kind of get some insight information on this. Um, that would be a 28. Jesus. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> 28. You have not... Uh, I'm going to roll for <laughs> Alistair. Um, you have not spent a lot of time talking to Alistair. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, it is a very high DC, but you did manage to get past it. Um, that was an odd conversation you had. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. you reached out to, uh, to him on the idea of uh, recognizing that they were students of the Mortimer Ludus. Do they have any... Uh, resources available for you to be able to procure. Um, uh, uh, Alistair's uh, response was not, was a resounding, not really. Um, there is, uh, uh, at first during the conversation, it seemed to be relatively sort of open, although albeit like kind of shocked, uh, surprised, um, uh, seem to be a little distracted. Um, and uh, with, uh, you say 28? Yeah. Uh, with that 28 insight, you you noticed a significant change Yeah. in, um, in language about halfway through. Um, you know that you can sometimes rub people the wrong way. And you were trying your hardest, especially coming out of that. So you, you were very mm -hmm. surprised and you did allow a little bit of uh, the uh, a little bit of the uh, normal Elgin kind of come through when uh, kind of given more pushback. Uh, the information that you did get was that Alistair's parents, uh, Alina mm -hmm. and Faustus, uh, could help uh, possibly um, as Faustus is someone who works at the school. Um, I think he just said worked at the school, if I recall. Yeah, he um, he said he worked at the school. He he. So Faustus and Alina can help. Also, um, someone named Callus or something like that, the professor's son. Um, Correct. Yes. And then he also told me that um, where we're looking for might be on the east side of the school near the quad. It's an entire wing of the school with its own tower that's closed off. Correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh yeah and so yeah started talking about tall that he got weird and yes yeah and when that happened i also i don't know if you remember i rolled an insight check when that happened as well and you had told me that um i could tell that they have other things that they're focused on yeah yeah so i think you know further on that because i already made you roll and you already rolled higher so i'm going to say that the the only added thing to that was that it seemed like such a switch in conversation that it was more than just something that they were distracted by. It was something they were worried about. Yeah. And he did mention to me that um, their conversations have been intercepted. So that put Eldrin on high alert as well. Right. Um, um, okay. Also, actually, the 28, one other thing, too, you got a weird question back um, yeah. uh, of like, uh, if uh, essentially a push came to shove, would they? Uh, uh, the way that Alistair, uh, I really loved how Clinton said this, uh, mm -hmm. would would we receive the same amount of welcome that Alina and Fosses would present to you if they were to go to Honoria? A very difficult question to answer as you are a princess, but it is a very different situation. Mm -hmm. The thought process coming out of that conversation was why would they ask 
why would Alistair ask that? Why would he, mm -hmm. um, why would he even bring that up? Uh, uh, very sensible in the idea that it was like a, you do something for me, like I'm doing something for you, mm -hmm. so you do something for me. As you close that conversation out, you feel like it's not that. It's something that ties into the idea of what they may be worried about in the conversation. So yeah, I come out of that a little, um, so Norris is in here with me and I started that off a very desperate, <laughs> I come out of it, like you said, more normal Eldrin because I'm frustrated as well, because um, Alistair frustrated Eldrin a lot. Um, mm -hmm. And Norris could hear my half of the conversation. Um, right, only your half, by the way. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Eldrin comes out of that and says that, that was frustrating and a little I don't know he's a very odd man yeah he seemed it um, but sounds like we got three names yes and possibly a place to go um, once we can figure out a safe way to get into the school so that's good um, yeah yeah I, uh, I would love to... Oh, go on. Ooh, I rolled really high. Uh, continue. Eldrin says, um, well, I guess the next one. I have a... I guess, I mean, uh, you know, we... I think we can both agree, obviously, Brimhild is smarter than I am, uh, so I imagine she's thought of this, too. But whoever was on the end of that prior conversation, if they were able to intercept that, is there not a possibility that they could be intercepting all of these conversations? That's one of my concerns. I don't know how clear or how, I don't know. I would hope that Brumhilda would say something if that was the case, instead of just leaving me in this room after I've already made a mistake. Um, I'll keep the same insight. I mean, I don't know how you, uh, I know how some people handle, uh, Betrayal, death, uh, guilt. But uh, I don't know how you find out that your that your uh, already shitty relationship with your father is now way worse, as he is the. Uh, harbinger of uh, the end of the world as we know it. I would say you focus on the father that raised you, but I saw that uh, when I was with her in her memory. So, yes, but um, hold on. Marvin? Yes, Elgin. Should I be concerned about what I say in this room and it being infiltrated or intercepted by the voice or the person that intercepted my conversation with my brother? Um, absolutely not. This is an impenetrable room. The only people that can hear is you, me, and Brumhilda. Now, would you have said it's an impenetrable room before I had reached out to my brother and that happened if I had asked if something like that could happen? Absolutely. Okay. So can you please um, converse with Brumhilda? I don't know how this works, if she's listening in real time. Um, and make sure before I reach out to other people about our very important plans that <laughs> that we're not being listened in on by anything but you. Uh, yep. 
yep, you'll ask her, or yep, we're good. Um, I will, uh, I will ask her. Okay. I One. will wait. You'll wait. Okay, great. One moment. Uh, we go back to Gwar. Uh, Gwar, you have the two cups. You find, uh, um, actually, I'm going to say just because this is really funny. Uh, you see, um, from Hilda in the armory, um, uh, uh, throwing a dagger into a wall. Um, she's going to roll an attack roll on the wall. <laughs> God, I love it. Uh, cool. You hear a clang, 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 clang as the uh, as the dagger uh, completely, I mean, hits the wall, but with the broad side of the blade and uh, clatters to the ground. Uh, you hear her uh, yell out a lot of expletives as you walk in. Am I interrupting something? I can, I can do it. I just, I haven't done it in a while. I haven't needed, I'm just making, what? I, I have no doubt. Were you throwing it uh, uh, point first or handle first? I don't remember. When I said you need to sleep here, uh, Marvin saw fit to, uh, 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 make some tea for us. I, I wanted to see if you were interested. I'm not. Thank you. Are you sure? You seem to think that it would help for you. And I think Mar too, to be honest. M Marvin said to you, I think this would help Brumhilda. I'm not quoting him verbatim. I'm just saying I got the impression from him that this, is help this helps you. No, I, I'm not that... Guar, I. Who built, who built Marvin? So you're saying that you subconsciously through Marvin said you wanted some tea. Got no, it. I'm saying that I. And I hand I I just I I hold out her mug. Thank you. You're welcome. I I, I I'm just I'm just trying to help. I. I... What kind is yours? I couldn't quite place it, but I got this. I got a little bit of a lavender note. Mine's more of a hibiscus. I like it. It's very good. Um, it's the, uh. it's, I, I, I built Marvin, so obviously Marvin's gonna know exactly what I like, and that's my favorite tea. Well, what kind uh, is it? I would love to know. It's it's not a kind guar. It's not a. I don't. I have it in a, a prepackaged thing. I. It's from flowers from a long time ago. Okay. That's all. I just was curious as what kind of tea you liked. Sure it's not... There's no chamomile in that? What? No. I, it's lavender. And um, some other... Some, uh, some other... What did you do? I just want you to rest. I, I just got the tea that what Marvin the prepared. What fuck did you... <laughs> um, uh, roll, me a, uh, roll me a sleight of hand check. Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. I have a plus zero in that. Oh, okay, 13. That's not terrible. 13. Not bad. Yeah, you um, you full on drop the uh, the tea um, as you catch her as she mm. kind of like falls into you. Um, full asleep. Um, uh, 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 at this moment, you hear uh, a voice go, um, question for, uh, Brumhilde. Oh, you're sleeping. Okay. I will wait until you're awake. Uh, Master Guar, would you need another tea? Mine's not going to knock me out, is it? 
I have no idea what you're talking about. There was information I was supposed to give to Eldrin, or sorry, what I was supposed to give to Brimhilda, but uh, clearly she is resting. So I will. Uh, I can uh, relay the message to her when she awakens. No need. All right, worth a shot. All right. Thank you. Uh, appreciate it, Marvin. Uh, when you get a chance, uh, the, the tea would be lovely. I had a sip. It was very nice. That's uh, from the black mug, sir? Y yes, not not the other one. Um. Is there uh, a bed in this room? Sir, her bedroom is on the first floor. That is the first door to the right. Um, Thank you. Also... Yes? She will be looking for someone to blame when she wakes up. Obviously, as she has created me, it is absolutely impossible for me to be involved in this predicament. God damn it, Marvin. Just making sure we understand each other, sir. Thank you. Fucking houses, man. <laughs> Fucking houses. <laughs> and I walk over to the bedroom door. Cool. Uh, to do that, uh, you have to walk down the stairs. Uh, so I would say, Saren, Saren, Milo, and Wilbur, you see Guar holding an unconscious Brumhilda. Guar, what I said, did you do? I said she needed to sleep. Don't take her out. She really was not, like, responding well to your advances. This is not going to help. I, oh, Milo. Oh. Everybody looks at Milo. Have some respect. I'm sorry. I'm saying this as quietly as Gwar can say that. Uh, you hear from Marvin A. Wow. Have you lost your mind? Do you think I would even stoop to that level? Do you think I would need to stoop to that level to get attention? Come on. I, 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 Look at this jawline. How did and you I, get her to go to sleep? Uh, Marvin gave her some tea? I, I, well, I gave her the tea, but he suggested tea, and I, I, he conjured the tea, and then I gave her the tea, and she had a sip of it, and then she just fell into my arms. Um, and now I'm trying to just, I don't know, get her somewhere comfortable. It is uh, imperative that I keep my... Uh, keep my level of abilities clear with you all. There is no possible way I was involved in what has happened. I gave them both tea, and that is what I know. Mm-hmm. Sure, Marvin. Or did you add Marvin. anything to the tea? No. Why would I do that? I'm very interested. I don't know. You're, you're holding an unconscious. Yes, I know, and I need to get her laying down so we're comfortable, so I'm going to go do that. I'll be right back. She needs rest. She oh, needs to God. be sharp. We need her at her best. She is not at her best. She's exhausted. Agreed. So, Milo, you'll take the blame for this, right? Uh, has she mentioned, did she, has she seen her diary? Has she mentioned anything about her diary? Uh, she did. Uh, last session, actually, no. we started with her being crazy mad at you. <laughs> Yeah, screaming yep. down the stairs. Yeah. Fire hands. You can That's just right. put the blame yeah. on me. She won't be mad at me. You spent oh. the entire session holding a book in front of you, um, <laughs> trying to hide behind it, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be very clear. War, War was kidding with Milo. So, her, Milo, I'm kidding. She's already mad at you about the book. I can take this. It's fine. Just would like to point out, uh, no need for me to cover any tracks, but for someone who is looking for someone else to blame, isn't there a rule in your uh, plane of uh, those that are looking for one to blame would be the one that is responsible? Well, we normally go by the Delta. rule of cool, so... Yes, that's the phrase. Similar, uh... I think it's, I think that's more of a, like, specific rule to, like, the plane of air. But well, it, like, the... it when it touches, when it, like, 
effects down here, yeah. Sometimes. The important thing is that we all trust each other and find a way to be able to exist in this mansion amicably. Yeah. So one of us is already kind of uh, been <laughs> thrown under the bus by a giant tree or a giant house. It looks like it's your turn, Guar. It's fine. <clears throat> Although I am not the one that dealt it. But I will say that I did. <laughs> Marvin, you owe me one. And I know I not of what you mean. Uh, yeah, Marvin, yeah, yeah, at yeah. the same time, is having a full conversation with Eldrin. Um, uh, to be clear, Marvin can be in two places at once in the house. Uh, mm -hmm. Marvin so, is explaining to uh, I don't Eldrin, trust Marvin. Uh, <laughs> Is it? I think it. I think it's fair to question what's more likely, and and honestly, it's a it's a toss up. A house that was built by an extremely powerful spellcaster disobeying its owner and going against their well wishes—a pretty crazy thing to happen uh, in this mm -hmm. world. Or a uh, guar uh, finding uh, some sort of. Uh, herbal uh uh <laughs> basically concocting a herbal uh thing that is able to uh make a very powerful spellcaster fall asleep well i mean if it's like his programming to protect her and like protect everybody in the house it would imagine that it would be something that's like best for her in that moment so i could see it sort of still being in his programming yep yeah. I mean, you know, as players, what happened, but yeah, there's a, yeah. there's a, there is a sense where I do feel like it could go either way. Um, in, in the idea I, that it yeah, can't Milo, go either Milo way. Milo doesn't fully, Milo doesn't fully believe that Guar doesn't have a role on it. <laughs> Makes sense. There's cards on the table. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Thinks awesome. a little of me. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you set uh, Brumhilda down. Uh, uh, you actually I, notice I, that when you, when you go to this room, this room is actually um, uh, Brumhilda has just made her room that was upstairs smaller. So it is actually taking up a section of that. So it is just the bed. It's an extremely small room. Uh, like in your in your view on this, it's like clearly saying like I am sleeping in this room and that's it. Like there's just a bed here. Uh, I gently set her down. Is there a blanket? Yep. I put the blanket over her. And I, like, lean in. And then I say, I hope your dreams are good. Sleep well. And dream of large paladins. Uh, and then I kiss her on the forehead. I walk away. Okay. You got it. Uh... As you pull the blanket over, uh, just because it's Brumhilda, I think this makes sense. You're you're reminded of how awful this blanket is. It's one of those like, um, it's extremely warm, uh, so like it's it's good at keeping you warm, but it has that sort of like, um, uh, I'm trying to think of how to describe it. it just picture your most uncomfortable blanket, and it's that. Like it's like it's function over over feeling. Um, yeah. You know, uh, sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I'd probably put it in like a, the most comfortable way possible where it's like not touching any bare skin if I can help it. So it doesn't yeah. like not a sensory issue. <laughs> As you yeah. do it, you're just like, ah. like uh, I was trying to be cool about it, but now I'm just like, ah. okay. <laughs> yeah. and then I, yeah. I kind of like slowly close the door. Yeah. Great. As you, uh, as you leave Broomhilda's room, you see Milo just, Look away quickly and just stare at a random spot on the wall. Just, hmm. Gwar just looks at him, just shakes his. <sighs> he's like, he's like three feet from where he was originally. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, Milo. Seriously. What? 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 You Come gotta, on. you gotta admit, it doesn't, it doesn't look great. Mm -hmm. what? I don't need feedback from you right now. Oh, sorry. Did you need something? No, I did not. Very well, then. 
Cutting to uh, Eldrin. Uh, apologies, uh, uh, Miss Enrath, uh, Princess, excuse me. Um, the uh, master of the house, unfortunately, is, uh, uh, well, uh, has decided to take a rest. Now? On, now. Would you I like understand me to, that she needs sleep. Would but you like me to wake now her? Is, no, I will. And Eldrin is going to get up, um, take her blanket okay. from Zaris, uh, and walk. To, she, she asked Marvin where to go, um, and then is going to go to Brumhilda's room. Uh, you go to open the door, and you cannot. Marvin? Yes, Why princess. can't I open the door? I believe you have the ability to open the door, princess. It's not opening. Uh, you see, you see Noros trying. Um, yeah, Marvin, it's not, I can, I can also concur it's not opening. Huh. We, we know how to open doors. Marvin, I, I, I'm not going to just wake her up and let her be exhausted. I have a plan. I have, I have the ability to help her in the situation. We need her awake if we are going to finish what we're doing right now. Uh, rolling persuasion check. Oh God, I'm gonna guide myself. <laughs> Is Mila still in the hall? Yes. Because I rolled a now. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, cool. Did, did with, Milo let me re-roll that? Uh, with a nat one. If not, uh, I'm going to use my inspiration if, if Milo can't use his ability. I, do you have to be able to see? Uh, let me get to it again. <laughs> uh, if, when an ally that you can see within 30 feet. Yeah. You cannot see Eldrin. Oh, I use my inspiration. Here, I'll say this just for the sake of because uh, Marvin is uh, Marvin does realize that like uh, I won't I don't need to explain that uh, as you go to pull the door one more time door opens. Okay. Okay. Uh, Eldrin oh, is going see? to go in there. There it is. You got it. Did you need anything else from me? No. Well. Eldrin goes in and um, takes off, she has a scratchy blanket on her, uh, takes that off of her. Are you trying to open that door? I, I thought you said it opened. I said your door opened. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that was my room. Um, well, the, the sending room wait, that you were in, you weren't able I? to were get out of the sending room, essentially. I thought I thought I was, okay, I thought I already left the sending room. Um, that was okay. That was the door that originally wasn't opening. Okay, I thought it was Broomhilda's door. Sorry, I was confused. Are you confused. for real going to wake um, her up? Now, now that you're at Broomhilda's door, you are trying to open it and it's not opening. Okay, but I say, because I thought that's what I was doing before, I say exactly the same thing to Marvin. <laughs> like, um, Interesting. It, there's a possibility that she might have cast some sort of spell. Oh, you know what? She did. Looks like she's uh, unable to be disturbed. Well, I guess that means none of us get to do anything for the next eight hours because I can't trust the sending room until I've spoken with her. Milo, do you want to go? That is No, no one is going to use that room until we have spoken with her because Listen. I just talked to someone who told me that there were people intercepting messages. Yeah, and you were you were the one that caused the problem in the first place, so I'm not sure, quite sure if you're the person that should be telling who, yes. who, who should use the sending room or not. Guar? There is someone who is very powerful that intercepted what I was saying to someone else. A sending spell should not do that. And I don't yes. think it is appropriate for us to divulge and, any more secrets when this person could be listening. And had you stuck to the list, this may not have happened. This isn't about that right now. Right now, it's over. I did it. Okay, great. I can make it so Broomhilda is not exhausted and we can keep doing our work. That's all I want to do. She can sleep tonight. 
She deserves rest, and we deserve to make sure that she is at her best. Fine. Then we sit here and do nothing for eight hours. You go for it. Sarah and Milo, either of you want to go? While you guys were arguing, Milo already started walking. (laughs) Milo, where'd you... Oh, oh, there he is. Eldrin says, great, awesome. I really hope that we divulge more of our secrets to everyone. And then she is going to walk over to the... uh, She's going to climb down. She doesn't want to be in this house anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's climbing outside. Uh, Does Milo hear, uh, uh, hear Eldrin say that? Yeah, like, I think are so. you trying to are you trying to say that like under your breath or like? No, I say that loudly because I'm. I don't think we should be using the room until we've confirmed that it's not going to be, you know. As Eldrin's that's not walking, bugged, essentially, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's not as, bugged. I don't know how to say it in a fantasy way. <laughs> it's not bugged. It's fine. As yeah. Eldrin's walking away, Saren's kind of saying this to her but is just assuming that she's not going to hear all of it but is says something to the effect of like well last time i tried to contact raylor with a sending ring it was also a weird voice i mean as long as we don't try to contact anyone we know could be possessed by tall it it should be fine right he wasn't possessed this was a different voice this was a I just don't want to take any more risks until we've talked to Brunhilda. But you guys do what you want. That's fine. To be fair, you're the only one that, that, that had this happen so far. And it was because you went off script. If we stick to the script and we don't reach out to loved ones. And I mean, we already thought something sketchy was going on with Volmos slash not Volmos. Yes. I hate to be the one to say this to you, Eldrin. I hate to be the one to say this to you. You let your emotions take over. Well, good luck. I will be on the ground. I don't want to be in this house anymore. I don't want something listening to me. Enjoy. And Eldrin's going to climb down the ladder. Uh, Noros uh, kind of like takes a look at the group, just kind of like nods a like, it's okay. Like, she's okay. Um, and then climbs down after you. Um, oh, I look at Saren and I just, I, 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 I say, I. I hope she's all right. I hope I wasn't too harsh on her. I'm I'm sure she'll be fine. Maybe not now, but we'll figure this out. Guar. Guar, roll me and check on yourself. Nat 20. Oh. For how much? Uh, you said insight, right? Mm-hmm. Um, insight would be uh, twenty-six. Twenty-six. As you think back to the idea of like, was I too harsh on her? Uh, that does, in my mind, forces you to rethink the like to to think back on the conversation. Mm-hmm. And you said because you reached out to loved ones. Mm -hmm. There's a part of you, Guar, that recognizes that it's been a while. It's been long enough that there's a possibility that Guar has forgot what it feels like to not be around loved ones. All of Guar's loved ones are here. Yeah. Those that are still alive. With a nat 20,
Guar, we go back. We see, starting at Guar's face, saving what had happened, we see a flash of smoke. Guar. How old? Where were? Set the scene. For the first time you remember thinking that you may have found love. Like love outside of my family? Like like a Yeah. Okay. Um sixteen. Um, I'm, I've, I've, I've gained enough, um, experience and skill where I actually have some free time now and I can wander about the city. We come to this memory. I will say there is, uh, we see We go far away to an area. We see bustling streets, people moving in and out, um, uh, dirt roads that are um, stuck with bits of gravel. We can see a cart that's up coming by, uh, uh, carrying uh, uh, weapons of various shapes and sizes uh we hear footsteps as the card eventually um that is like kind of stopped in front of us eventually moves back and we see two figures walking towards the camera one is a very gruff looking individual uh gray hair coming down the sides uh uh kind of a like almost like salt and pepper beard um uh we see there is a uh there's a significant gash on the nose this individual um and you see uh he is wearing full armor full regalia um uh he looks older, um, probably like in his like mid to late sixties. Um, and we see a figure that is already, um, even at this point, I'd say probably like, how tall do you think Guar is at 16? Probably at least six foot at that point. Cool. So standing just as tall as this other man, uh, this man is, uh, Mateus Arroyo. Uh, he is a trusted uh, member of your father's, uh, basically like a like a a war hero like your father, but essentially like worked under your father's command. Um, uh, he is uh, uh, never too far away from you, even at sixteen. Essentially, your bodyguard. But also you've, I mean, you've, you've trained with him, I'd say probably a little bit more than you've even trained. I'd say more than you trained with your father. Sure. Um, uh, he is, uh, he's a trustworthy guy. Um, but, uh, yeah, you see as the cart kind of passes, you're walking, uh, down a cobblestone path and Mateus looks at you, uh, looks at you. And says, All right. Uh. Master Monomarth, where to today? You know, uh... <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm qu quite sure. I... It's been a while since I've been out in town. I... <clears throat> uh... Do you think I could go to the tavern? Is it, will it... 
here. I can get away with a. Love to get an ale. That would be kind of fun. I heard it's really good. I, uh, well, I did promise your father I would, uh, look after you, so, uh, yeah, it would make sense we go get a beer. Um, you, uh, yeah, you, the, like, shocked expression, he gives you a wink and, like, uh, really? gives you one of those, really? like, Shh. yeah, just, um, maybe, uh, let me do all the, uh, let me do all the talking. I, that, that sounds, that sounds great. I, I look forward to it. <clears throat> look forward to it. <laughs> you see, uh, as you continue down the pathway, um, you see there are uh, uh, you see a group of children uh, like playing uh, uh, playing in the streets, essentially like um, like holding sticks. Uh, uh, they could be more than like five or six years old, but like holding sticks and basically like sword fighting with each other. And the um, they're uh, fighting with each other, and then you see they all kind of run past and all laughing and enjoying. A childhood that was very unlike your own. Soon yeah, enough, I... they'll have to trade in those sticks. But I, I can't help but envy them, though. You know, it, it, I don't. I never got to play like that. I... Best not to dwell on such things, Master Monmouth. I right, right. That's right. I don't. I don't need that. It's okay. Yeah. I'll just put it this way: it is the end result is the same. Having that experience is not what I remember. What I remember is my first time that your father saved my life. And that is something that, unfortunately, these boys and girls will most likely come to soon enough. Uh, it I, is. I will save them. I will save them all. Uh, it is in this moment that you remember that, uh, like in this memory, you're uh, you're about a week out from shipping out. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be uh, 17 in a week. I, I get to join father in the, in the war. Yes, uh, and it'll be good to have you by my side. Of course, uh, I'll have to make sure that we are working a little bit more on that left jab till then. I got it like three times last time. Yes, and an old an old man who is way past his prime. Yes, uh, impressive. And once, Master Gua. It was twice. It was at least twice matthias come on i mean give me, give me a break i'm i'm ready guar it's at that moment that time slows down you feel your ears grow hot as you see a girl Breaking through clouds, or sorry, breaking through the crowd that is, uh, that is uh, moving in the opposite direction. You see, uh, it's a moment that even now you'll never forget. You see a woman with uh, 15, 16 years old. Uh, black hair, um, very, like, thick, um, uh, like, uh, thick, uh, glasses that are, uh, clearly weighing down on her nose. You see she has to continuously prop them up as they are, uh, seem to be made of some sort of heavy metal. Um, uh, you see that she is, uh, carrying a book under her arm, and you remember the sound of her humming to herself. She's 10 feet, eight feet, six feet. You feel your heart. 
you feel a rush of adrenaline like you've never felt before, as if you're ready to be able to climb the closest building or stab anyone uh, in the streets. You're able to fight a million men in this moment. She looks at you. She smiles. And your body feels weak. Your heart falls down. You feel your arms, your legs, your head, your back as if you had just if filled with an exhaustion as if you had just fought a million men. She smiles, pushes up her glasses, and continues to walk on. I'd like to role play that real quick. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. Uh, Oh boy, I know that look. No time for that, Master Gua. Come on. Literally now, kind of like pulling your arm. What? No, wait. Who was that? That is someone that if you survive this war, you can talk to later. Well, I'm going to survive the fuck out of that war. Come back to a Guar who is staring off. You snap out of it. Milo. You Jeff. walk into you walk into the room. Um, you feel a uh, a weird like for Milo. I think I, I think Milo's probably the only one that can actually like feel a difference in this room. Um, not in an arcane sort of way, but maybe in a way of like you can feel like there's there's like some sort of form of like electricity in the air. It's hard to it's hard to put your finger on anything other than that. Um, uh, you have the floor. Um, so yeah, as as uh, Eldrin is walking out um, and uh, and says uh, maybe I won't be, hopefully I'm not the only one that, uh, to like divulge our secrets or something. I can't remember exactly what you said, but um, with that line, um, right after that line, uh, you'll just hear the the door click quietly um, as he as he sneaks into the sneaks into the sending room and um, and uh, as he steps in, he. Uh, This is one. Well, first, Marvin. This is the first time I've been able to get along with you. What? I mean, I did write my name in her. Journal. Yes, sir. That this was, is that was, this is not the first time we've been alone together. But, okay, the first time I've paid attention to us being alone together. Um, since I've gotten yelled at by Broomhilda for. In your defense, I wasn't able to talk then. Valid. No, yeah, you were using drawers and and uh, sounds. It was honestly, it was cute. This is cool, though. Um, also, don't you told you told me to you showed me her journal. I I, f I feel like you're a little bit culpable for me getting yelled at. I remember opening a drawer for you to pull out something. Very important. Were there, yes. other things in, were there other things in that drawer that I that weren't the journal? Uh, I think, or above board, I think you did find something else in there. Did I? Yeah. It's valid. I believe you. It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's where you found the scrolls. Wasn't it? 
the scrolls yeah, that you try to use scrolls. to contact and then the luck. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's correct. Oh yeah, and they and they uh, erase they erase themselves after I tried, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Um, as he's like, as he's like demanding an apology from uh, from Marvin, uh, he <laughs> it's going that scene is going to uh, dawn on him, and uh, mm -hmm. he's gonna um, well, yeah, yeah, I kind of screwed that one up myself, didn't I? Um, Not at all, sir. Anyways, uh, it's, I mean, it's cool you have, how, Sen sentience? You're alive? I don't know. I don't know how this is working, but, um, it's, it's, it's nice to officially meet you. Thank you. I am, as my master made me, um, is there anything that I can get you while you're, uh, making your, uh, messages? Uh, do you know how to do you know how to make breakfast drink? I do not, but you tell me the ingredients, I will try my best to make do. Uh you could just say I, I tell you the ingredients if you wanted to. Yeah. I'm, I was trying to I was trying to make it uh Or yeah. you can RP. Yeah, yeah, Milo's either way. Gonna my, um yeah, Milo's gonna tell Marvin the ingredients. Okay. Um, so, so I don't understand. So you, you boil yeah, the eggs heads. and then yeah. add the fish heads. Yeah. And whiskey, whiskey is important at the end. Um, if you add it too soon, it, it cooks out all the alcohol. It's not great. Did you um, mean to say that you boil the eggs in their shells and not, and then crack them open later? The way that you gave the instructions, you said to open the shells and then boil the insides. Yeah, yeah. You 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 crack the eggs into the in into the broth, and then throw the shells in there. Understood. I will uh, see what I can do. It may take a little time. It. You'll know. You'll know it's perfect if it's gray and a little fizzy. Understood, Master Milo. I will. Uh, I will be here, and I will be making that drink as well. Thank you. Who would you like to contact? Can you reach out to uh, Rosie Underdale? <laughs> she is unconscious. <laughs> She's unconscious. Um, Brumhilda is. Brumhilda also, is. Do, does, does Jamie know oh. who Milo is supposed to contact? Yes, Jamie Did anybody know. tell him? Okay. Cool. Yes. Jamie knows? <laughs> yeah, that's why I sent you the Discord last week, man. Oh, but yeah. Jamie does it is Cab perfect, Cabo and, I, so and honestly, Jamie would reach out to Rosie first. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, hold on. Milo would reach out to Rosie first. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, not Jamie. Milo. Oh, this is uh, not. Oh, this is not business. Yeah. So the so so to be clear, I just want to make sure that you, yeah. Jamie, understand. Yeah. What you're about to do is exactly what got Eldrin in trouble. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure you do that. Cool. Yeah, but it's it's okay because it's my mom. Love it. Love it. Um, you do hear from... Uh, <laughs> you do hear... <laughs> you do hear from Marvin. Are you sure that is a name that is uh, on the list, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, she's fine. She's She doesn't know anybody. It'll be great. It'll be okay. She's well, cool. That's fine. She's with me. <laughs> the master of the house is currently detained, so... Very well. You feel like you can say what you want? Um, hey, Mom. 
Mom, it's uh, it's Milo. No response just yet. Oh, I thought you would... Did you really just waste a sending message just saying, Hey, Mom, it's Milo? Where are you? Uh, where... Have, how many words has this been? Uh, shit. Um, where... Tell me where you are immediately. I am in Eisenheim about to get on a boat. Mom, do... Do, do not get on a boat. I am not... I'm not in Honoria. I am not, uh, I'm on land. I'm in, oh, right now I'm in Marvin. Um, we, we got back from the, sh the shadow fell and, uh, everything's okay. I like, honestly, I didn't get hurt that bad. Um, uh, better than I thought it, uh, better than I thought it would go. Um, but we got our friend back, um, and I just wanted to let you know I'm okay. Um, do, do not go to Honoria. There's no need. Continue. <laughs> there's, there's no need for you to, uh, to, to hunt me down. I'm, I'm safe. Okay, you could have used the one sending spell explaining that information to me. You must have used two for that. Honey, remind me to tell anyone in your party to explain how sending spells work. No, I I, I know how they work. I, uh, Milo's going to, like, interrupt her. Yeah, no, you interrupt, and that's like... This is, wait. This is, like, a, this is, like, a different thing. It's, it's, um... I have a friend that's, uh, uh, pretty pretty powerful uh, oh. okay um uh hold hold on one sec no i guess i'm i guess i'm fine thank you uh okay all right so um literally called me just in time um okay were why you, the hell were, were you in shadow fell were you just gonna like swim down, like get out of the boat and swim down? What, were you, what was your plan? I don't know. I don't know. My son was in Shadowfell. What were you doing in Shadowfell? Uh, it was a lot of, a lot of. It was a good. I mean, it was a good amount of fighting. But it was, Milo I mean, it was Underdale, very... tell me exactly why you were in Shadowfell, and you better make it good. I had a friend that needed help. Okay, then. But you're back, and you're safe. I'm back. I'm safe. Everybody uh, everybody that we left with is uh, whole. Some have holes in their memory, but I'm good. Um, yeah, we're, we're solid. Wow. <laughs> okay, good. Um... Wow, that is, uh, 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 that is, um, uh, you can full on hear your mom is crying. Yeah. Your, your boy's, your boy's strong. I can, I can, I can hold my own. Um, I, I know that. I know that. I know. I never doubted that. Hmm. <clears throat> Okay, well, uh, it was very nice of you letting me know, and like I said, um, not a moment too soon on knowing that you're safe. Uh, is there any chance that you'd be visiting home anytime soon? I will come home as soon as I can. Okay, I understand, I know. I we, um, just kind of have to save the world first. Of course, uh, of course. Um, oh, and did, uh, um, no, you go. <laughs> we could do this. This is funny. 
Sorry. How's, uh, how, it's just like at home. Uh, I'm always interrupting you. How's, uh, how's Uncle Bob doing? Oh, uh, well, um, he, uh, so you, uh, this dude had a full name. Actually, I do have that up somewhere. Uh, hold on one second. Oh, well, um, you know, he, uh, he, he's, he's, he's getting on. Um, he, uh, uh, oh, uh. By the way, um, unfortunate news. Uh, do you remember that um, the uh, well, the uh, the shopkeeper? Um, oh, Mickey. Mickey, yeah. Uh, Mickey is no longer with us. Um, I remember that name. He. Uh, oh. uh, yes. Uh, also, the shop is no longer with us. Apparently, the candles on his head uh, were a fire hazard. Um, no one seemed to let him know. Um, but uh, it's okay. Uh, there is, um, well, I mean, you know, not for him. I but assume, uh, I assume, those Seriously, I assume that was like some sort of magic thing happening. That was just straight no, up candles. No, he just... <laughs> Hold on. No, he just full on just was putting candles on his head, uh, and uh, everyone just, you know, I, myself included, just thought it was so crazy that he must he must know more than we do. Um, but it turns out uh, Bob is now the um, is now the uh, shop owner there. So. Oh, good for him. Yeah, uh, uh, I uh, sent him a uh, welcoming present that was candles that now I'm thinking uh, was in bad taste. It's a little, it's a little dark, Mom. Yeah. But, you know, as you always say, the room would be dark without them, so. Right. And he did laugh and then cried. That's good. Uh, well, I have, um, I have a couple of other people to talk to. Um, I love you. Can you tell, uh, can you tell Dad, Perrin, and Deanna that I love them and miss them? Of course, I will. Um, I will absolutely do that. Um, you know, actually, I might um, I might spend a day here. There's someone uh, I haven't talked to in a long time. Uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I will. Uh, I will see you. I'm Wait, sure at home um, as soon as possible. Do you, you know someone in Eisenheim? Yeah, I did have a life before you. It wasn't just all about you and the kids. Yeah, but it couldn't have been. I mean, much of one. I like, right? We're like. Remind me. Uh, do me a favor and uh, make sure you send me whatever uh, the address of wherever you're staying, so I can make sure that I can send you a present. And I promise it won't be candles. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. You enjoy your time in Eisenheim. Stay safe. Uh, if you run into a tiny little lawyer uh, named uh, Karen, tell him hi. Uh, tell him Milo says hi. Yeah. Oh, I know Karen. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, yeah. Let's see if I, can find I need to call you more often. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is he still here? Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I'll uh, I'll reach out to him. All right, I uh, I love I love you, mom. I love you too. Be safe, or right. else, or I'll threaten you with Shadowfell. You had to remind me of that. That was. You said it like once a week. I I, I did say like, I know. I, I did like say no. Nope. You're right. That's that is. You know, I deserve that. I guess. Okay. All right. Yes, but no more. Obviously, now it would be even less funny. Um. Okay. I love you. Stay safe. I don't know how to turn this thing off. So. Uh. Off. Yes. See. So I heard you say off. Oh. Hey, hey Marvin. Can you turn this off? Oh, so you can just choose with your mind to end the call. Love 
that feels that feels mean. I don't want to end the call with Mama. All right, uh, all right, Bob, I gotta go. Oh, I heard that. <laughs> Uh, and Milo's gonna take a second and like, huh? how does she know Karen? Anyways, uh, and uh, he's gonna. Uh, uh, Marvin, can you um, do I do I have to ask you to call? Some, no, to, sir. You don't need to ask me to. My brain. Okay. Nope. Yep. And he's going to uh, uh, try and talk to Drusilia. Okay. Uh, what do you say? Hey, Drew, it's Milo. It's very cautious and Seriously, that's all you're gonna say in a message? You're gonna waste time just spending just Yeah, it's a whole thing. I um it doesn't work the way like the normal messages. What? Work. Uh, you can just Who's... say what you want. Yeah, you don't you don't have to count anymore. Alright, okay. stop. Oh What time is it? Where I can't what are you doing? I can't walk it's I don't know. Eleven noon? Uh it's like two or three o'clock. Yeah. Uh, what, um, what can I, oh, you can't turn down the volume of someone talking in your head. No, can you speak soft? Can I, can I, is, if I whisper, is it better? No, it's just, it's just more annoying because I'm having a strain. Okay, uh, so I'm just going to talk then. Uh, hey, Drew, uh, so that thing about, uh, you know, Y'all heard all y'all heard the voice and tall and is real angry about Wilbur. Um, what are the odds that you can gather a couple of friends and meet us to help protect Imea from tall? Yeah, uh, when and where it's a shit show down here. It seems like a common uh predicament uh milo's gonna share the information cool um, yeah. and uh i hope you're doing okay i um everything everything we went through together was uh it's pretty heavy god damn um Yeah, yeah, I hope you're doing good too, Milo. Um, listen, I got a call on the other line. What does that mean? It means I need you to stop talking in my head now. Okay. Bye, Drew. Proud of you. Alright. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so to to suffice the information, Drew just said like when and where. Um, we'll say that you know, uh, mechanically speaking, uh, 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 my, I don't know if Milo knows this or not, but uh, Saren reached out to Hagen, who's you know, um, so most likely they'll come up together. Okay. No. What is happening? Uh, Lorian had that happen too. What was that? I don't know what Lorian's was. Mine, uh, my, uh, my like key light is battery powered, and when the battery starts oh. dying, it does that, uh, which gotcha. is real, you know, not safe. I have no idea what mine is. Yeah, it doesn't that happen is... anywhere but here <laughs> when it's crazy starts, like, doing that. Yeah, was yours like your camera doing that, or was it the? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Uh, um, yeah, Milo's gonna reach out to um, Milo's gonna reach out to Micah. Okay, you got it. Um, hey, Micah, I don't know if you remember me. This is this is Milo um, with the the Mongoose crew.
Oh, that is the end of that message? Yeah, you don't really have to count words the way this spell works. I don't I don't understand it, but uh, it's oh. kind of... Yeah, we can just talk. Interesting. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, um, uh, my little... Uh, uh, small but fierce. I remember. Oh, thanks. Saren did tell Milo that Hagen mentioned Micah mm -hmm. and said to tell him hi from Hagen. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if Jamie knew that. Jamie did not know that. Um, hi, for, uh, first, hi. Um, uh, Hello? We have a mutual friend uh, that I've met since uh, meeting you, uh, Hagen. Um, Hagen says hi. Okay. Uh, the reason I am uh, sending to you, uh, and feel free to say no, I know this is a crazy thing, um, but uh, did you hear the, did you hear the voice a couple, uh, a couple of days ago? Oh, you mean the voice? Yeah, the voice, so tall and. Send Wilbur, blah blah blah, all the wombats. And yes, of course. Real angry. Um, so we are putting together a. Um, army? I don't know if army is the right word. Uh, putting together friends to. Um, to, to... F uh, Milo, friends is better word. Friends? Okay. I guess it depends on who you're talking to, but uh, I'm going to pretend that you said friends. We are putting together a group of friends to um, to go investigate and um, potentially confront dangers towards Imea. I was uh, I was wondering if you or any of your friends would possibly be able to join us. You're asking a. Very old Earth Genasi. I have had many adventures. I have taken down many foes. I. I don't know. I'll have to think on. Uh, did you talk to Hagen about this? I haven't talked to Hagen. My, uh, somebody in my party has talked to Hagen about it. Is he going to fight? Does uh, Milo know if Jamie Hagen's... doesn't know this, so feel free to jump in. Um, yeah. So he he took an oath of what was it? An oath of against like nonviolence. Non yeah. Yeah, nonviolence, and he agreed to counsel us. And the branches is are going to help, but he needs to think on it. He's not sure if he is willing to break his vow. Yeah, but he is, like, willing to come to Broomhilda's house and mm -hmm. stay with us and help us out in some way. We're gonna have a slumber party. Yeah. <coughs> um, <laughs> Even uh, better than the brothel episode. The slumber yeah. party. <laughs> Who's gonna sleep with who? <laughs> There's many rooms for anyone to sleep alone. It's a big, big house. It's a big, big house. Lots, lots and lots of room. Lots of room. Uh, Maybe. so my, uh, Milo's going to, uh, respond to Micah and say, um, yeah, hey, uh, Hagen said he would be willing to join us. Um, he's not comfortable fighting, but he, uh, he's going to be more of a, and I think he, I think he feels more comfortable in a, like, counselor, consultant role. Um, but he is bringing, he is bringing, uh, a good number of people to help us. Interesting. I guess kind of roundabout, but at least he's sticking to his word. Good. I will, um, I will think on this. Um, I truly don't know how much help I will be. As I said, it's been a very long time since I have uh, 
been physically useful. No, oh, I'm sure that's not true. Um, anyways, uh, Milo's going to share the what? information for the meetup. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to share the information for the meetup um, with Micah and say, uh, yeah, if you um, if you want to join us, we would love... Um, honestly, we could use all of the mines uh, that we can that we can put a, put to this task um, and if you feel like fighting with us uh, we would love to have you as well okay uh, I can't say anything about my uh, my current friends they are probably going to have to be here to look after the place for any other restless souls that will come out but uh, for myself I will think on this and uh, you'll know my answer that day Thank you, Mecca. Good to hear from you. Oh, it was good, uh, good, good to talk to you again, too. Um, bye. Uh. <laughs> cool. Uh, you got one more? Uh, yeah. Uh, he's gonna, um, moving down his, uh, I imagine this is written just on his palm so he didn't forget, um, I feel like the Micah conversation made me the palms got a little sweaty, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kavarsh? Um, <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, hey, Kavish, um, it's Micah. Milo. <laughs> God, Jamie, that's so good. Um... Oh, um, hello, Milo. Um, hi. Uh, so, I don't know a better way to say this that's not as blunt, but have you put any more thought to um, you or perhaps any uh, anybody else that would be interested in joining us um, uh, fighting against the voice or even just like strategizing about this whole ordeal um unfortunately it is not an ideal time the family is rather busy with some council things uh trust me i do understand this is important but uh in all honesty uh it is pretty customary for us to stay out of things of this nature uh, Milo, roll me an inside check. Yep. Eighteen. Uh, this would be a this would be a know your truth thing. Oh, uh, then twenty one. No. Twenty one. Two. Twenty two. Amazing. He's lying. Um, well, uh, yeah, I, 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 I get that. Um, the, uh, I just, I, I the, the whole the goal of our uh, of our mission and our current uh, our current stretch is to uh, is to help the security of all of Imea. Um, parts of Imea that uh, part there will if we if we fail in this mission there will be no parts of Imea that am can I to be assume. Am I to assume in this part of the conversation you're assuming that I do not care for all of Imea because of this question? No, I, I, in no way. That was not that was not the implication I was meaning to make. Um, it was 
honestly, simply for me to um, me to digest and and to uh, your. I feel our I feel our goals are aligned. Um, you protecting those that you love and care for, and, and have taken taken a mission to protect, and ours to protect not just them but the greater the greater world. Um, I I I really don't feel. You, you, you know I loved my time with with you. I I know that if we don't succeed, that's that space that you invited me into will no longer be full stop. It will no longer be. And that breaks my heart. Well said, Mother Wanderdell. I will continue to think on this and give you my answer soon. The only thing I can say in defense of myself that flowers are beautiful because they don't last forever. If that is the fate where the world is going, like a river, we just follow the current. However, it doesn't mean we can't Stand against some things. A tree can only a tree can only grow tall and strong if it weathers the wind. Or so I've heard. Are you using a nature metaphor with me? Did it work? <laughs> you hear a smile on the other end. <laughs> Milo and Adele, I promise I will give you my answer. The sun is at this point tomorrow. Okay. Um, Milo's going to share the information. And uh, uh, if, if anyone else would like to, you, you would like to bring along or you would like to send, um, I, I know you uh, don't like to spend too much time away. Um, that would be great. Um, and then how are, how are my... Um, South I and friends that were visiting you. Um, the younger one um, seems to be doing okay. Uh, busy still and whatever he's working on. Uh, Perfect. Yes, I guess you could say that. Um, uh, Demoran is uh, regaining his strength. Uh, but okay. seems to be Getting there. Good. Uh, if you, uh, you could let both of them know I asked about them. I will. Well, uh, good luck, Mr. Milo. I will uh, look forward to hearing from you soon. Um, and you end. Last thing is Marvin says, uh, Master Underdale, it is important that I let you know that I will have to let the master of the house know about these conversations. All of them. Okay. Uh, are there any that you feel would, uh, how to say this nicely, uh, conflict with the master of the household's uh, interests? Yes. But that's not for me to do anything but to pass along the information. Okay. 
Um, do what you will. Or do what you must. Thank you. Also, uh, your breakfast drink is waiting for you outside of the room. I was going to bring it in, but uh, the stench did clear the hallway, so I thought maybe best to keep it out of the arcane abilities of this room. That's a good sign. Uh, uh, well, thank you. Um, I'm gonna... Uh, well, I guess you'll see me when I leave. All right. And Milo's going to leave her. <laughs> <laughs> what a great way to go to break. That's amazing. Uh, with that, as Milo walks out, seeing a a uh, a uh, large kind of like stein of a grayish liquid that seems to be bubbling and fizzing, uh, we are going to take that time to take our 10-minute break. Uh, we'll see you guys in 10. <laughs>
All right, welcome back. Uh, so uh, as Milo comes out, uh, I think we see 
Uh, most everyone is probably in the war room, just like away from the hallway. Uh, 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 Milo, give me a Constitution saving throw as you ingest this oh. horrible drink. It tastes like uh, home. You should get the advantage. I do have advantage against poison. Um, Love it. But it was nineteen. Uh, you have advantage against poison. Yeah. Um. Okay. Uh, uh, you're yeah, good. I have advantage against poison and poison damage. Right. Yeah, you're good. I was gonna say roll the advantage just in case, but no, you're good. Uh, cool. You and Jessa and your your um, you taste uh, it's not perfect. It's uh, it's uh-huh. like it needs a human touch to it. It's not rancid enough. It's not. It's not quite. Furbo- you mean a furball touch? It needs a furbog touch to it, yes. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, Baldus puts his hair in it, right? Baldus puts his whole foot in it. Um, <laughs> just missing left no crumbs. Um, after taste. Uh, so you, as Milo's leaving the uh, the setting room, he's he passes um, he passes the war room, not looking in any doors, just taking taking a drink of breakfast drink. Um, and you hear the most raucous belch, um, oh. just reverberates reverberates in the in the house um, as Milo walks to uh, to the uh, to like the living room and finds the most comfy like reading chair. Oh, I'm so sorry. The, the war room is the living room. Oh, there, there's. It's uh like okay so one thing I do want to make very clear it is amazing like this place is amazing as far as like what's available here but it is very much in the style Singular. of Brumhilda of like this is what we need and therefore this is what we have obviously amenities can be made uh uh, uh in the long run but uh yeah right now you're in the war uh, well I mean you're either in the war room or you're in the armory or you're in the sending room or you're in your own private room which has uh uh, about as as simplistic of uh, uh, amenities as needed. Is there a kitchen? There is a kitchen. You haven't found it yet. Okay. Um, then Milo is going to uh, wander to just try and find find the kitchen to. Cool. Yeah. Set give up. me a uh, give me a survival check. Nat twenty. <laughs> Oh, my own kitchen. You, you drink, you drink, you drink, you drink the drink and then start to follow the source. Uh, yeah. And you, uh, you find it on the second floor uh, all the way in the back. Okay. Yeah. Um, then, uh, you see, actually, as you walk in, uh, it's also, a, it's a little more obvious as you get closer as you actually hear the banging of like pots and pans. Uh, and you see uh floating uh floating cleaning supplies that are doing everything they can to try to get that smell out of the pot that they just made um uh you don't see any uh, any figures to talk to yeah um yeah then uh i assume there's like a dining room table or some like something there and milo's gonna sit there and just quietly read whatever book he has cool uh very nice. Uh, what a weird like like you just hear like the cling clang cling clang. Just, just, just getting us some time taking some easy reading. Yeah, I love it. So, but yeah, I th- I, uh, I think the so for for Milo, I think this is him like feeling like he's back at the at the inn in Brunte. Yeah, he's drinking this and it's loud and it's like there's like just weird like there's just things happening around him and he's just sitting there happily drinking his breakfast drink i love it uh give me an insight check this is an eight with an eight as you're appreciating the ambience uh of this room you can't help but start to see just like almost like ghostly images of memories of the people of brunte 
You see Bob and his wife arguing off at a uh, um, at a table that is not really there. Um, you see uh, Kroga uh, walking in and uh, I'd say like you see the nearest table seem to kind of like freeze and fright and just stare straight forward as he walks by. You see, and we'll call her Sarah, uh, another halfling woman, a uh, single mom, has literally like 10 children all about in this inn, trying her best to, to kind of like coax them into staying in one place and uh, apologizing to the people around her as they are uh, just... Uh, literally like spilling into other tables like liquid, just <laughs> trying to cook some in. And... With an eight, you... I think, Milo, you get this feeling of hearing your mom's voice and remembering her snide comments, her scolding, her her uh, constant bickering to you about your appearance, your work ethic, your fill in the blank. And I think You came here for comfort, but you're sitting here feeling homesick. Just at least a... Something I think you just never really thought you would ever feel. No. Uh, you... <laughs> you... Recognize that, uh... You think back to when Guar was uh, adding to the list and said the name Kroga, and your ears kind of perked up at that. Was, oh, there's no way. And then you think back to Guar uh, uh, earlier today, Guar coming out of the room and saying, uh, he's all on board. It just feels odd. Let me cut away from you. Uh, Wilbur, you're sitting, I think, at the war table, just like kind of staring at Quar um, uh, and Saren. Uh, you have said about three times now to Marvin, uh, no, I don't need anything. Um, and uh, at this point, seeing Milo kind of walk out and you in hearing Milo walk out uh, with that belch, um, you know that you are next. Well, I, I guess it's my turn. <laughs> Good luck, Wilbur. Hope it smells better in there. <laughs> Thank you. You can do it. I believe in you. I'll tell Riley you all said hi. Yes, please do. Hope she's well. You walk up to the room, you walk in, close the door behind you. <laughs> I apologize for feeling... Feeling. <laughs> I apologize for... Wanting to state this to be clear on what was told of you from the master of the house. Uh, this is a room that is designed for recruitment. And as was told to me, recruitment only. I, of course, can't do anything to stop you. 
but uh, personal calls, uh, I I would uh, advise to uh, refrain from making. Okay. Yeah. No. I'm 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 calling for recruitment. Hey, Winona. <laughs> I already spoke to her in my dreams. Duh. If you say that out loud, uh, Marvin just goes, oh, I'm sorry, what is exactly the words that you said to... Uh... I assume you say that in your head. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, I need to call Riley. How does this work? Uh, you can just think about that... Uh entity in your head and start talking and that's uh, that'll do the trick Riley it's Wilbur how are you oh Wilbur it's good to hear from you I hope you're staying safe I know that it's been a hard time. Everybody here misses you very much. Wilma has not asked about you, but I can tell that she especially misses you in her way. I assume you're not just calling to say hi. Uh, you hear uh, Wilbur, no inside check required. You've, you've kind of spent your life with Riley in a weird way. Um, you hear a Riley that you imagine is 100% back to normal. The voice like giving this very like soothing, soft, comforting sort of sound uh, reminds you of the first time that you quote unquote met Riley, um, which was at uh, Eldrin's wedding. Why, why would you assume I'm not just calling to say hi? Well, I guess I didn't know I could feel this special. Thank you. I, how are you doing? I'm okay. Um, how goes the search for the missing wombats? Oh, well, uh, you may have found out we did find Winona and Walter. Uh, we are still missing a few more. I did hear of one, uh, unfortunately, in Azumare. I have yet to be able to contact anyone to help retrieve them. However, the rest are my friends are still looking for. Azumare. It's the slave gaming town in North Imea. One would hope that they would have heard the voice and are in the process of transferring uh with us uh, to Dwendelver. And if so, uh, I can reach out to little creatures and of course my vines to possibly intercept. Uh, but as I stated, my new friends seem to be wrapped up in something else. Who are 
are your new friends? I believe uh, Milo at least met them. Uh, they go by the new moon. Oh. Yes, uh, I've actually met them now, too. Oh, that's lovely. Um, I hope they're all doing well. Um, well, oh, um, one of them, uh, is actually deceased. Oh no. Uh, may I ask which one of them? Aaron. That is unfortunate. How did they pass? It's a long story. Um. <laughs> Everybody takes a D4 of psychic damage. Shut up. I'm not That's in not the room, nice. so. <laughs> yeah, I'm outside. Like, I'm not even in no, the I said everyone. I meant players. Uh, <laughs> I have a headache. My nose starts to bleed. <laughs> All of Imea gets the same headache. Yeah, yeah. It's the, yeah, at the same time, yeah. My vision goes blurry. <laughs> uh, um, so we went to we we were in the shadow fell and um turns out Tall was there uh and had That's really funny. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Um, oh, <laughs> I didn't even see Evans before that. I felt that before. <laughs> um, and he had he had uh, Broomhilda under his control, and there was a large battle, and that's how we came across New Moon. Oh, uh, well, that's, that's, that's not good. That's, why did that, why did that happen? Why, you said it was Tall that did that? Yes. I, um. I, I guess I'm getting kind of sick of hearing that name in regards to people suffering. Uh, you can hear her voice like starts to change. Like she's she's getting it back into it, like a sort of weird space where you've seen her as as you're prepping for that fight. Um, uh, um, where are they? Where are they now? I think they told us where they were going, right? Oh, I don't know. Yeah. I feel like they told they us. Yeah. Okay. Um, they're, they're in, they went to Celeste. Um, well, okay. Well, not too, not too far away. Maybe they'll visit and I can give my condolences in person. Riley, we need your help. Okay. Um, we're we're with Broomhilda, and we're preparing for another fight against Tall. Um, you know, we beat him during that fight 
when we met New Moon, but it was really weird. I heard this voice in my head that said, that's one. Um, but we're preparing to fight him again, and we're trying to get all of the help that we can get because if Aaron had not sacrificed themselves, essentially, we would have all died in that battle. Well, you know, Wilbur, I, you know how much I care about the grove and protecting it. And there is nothing more I feel in my heart than to send that son of a bitch ten feet under it. So tell me where to go and I will meet you there uh, assuming that I don't need to be there for any of the planning process but anything that I can do quickly and uh, help uh, so that I don't leave the grove for too long but I would very much like to see this monster meet his downfall. And anything I can do to facilitate that would make me very happy. Well, um, we're still in all of the planning stage, but um, kind of our hub uh, is here at Marvin. Um, I don't know when the last time you've been in Marvin, but Broomhilda's done some upgrades. Her house? Yeah. It's... It's pretty big. Pretty big upgrades. Oh. Including this, I think, the sending room. I don't think this was here before. It's... So Broomhilda's with you? Yes. It's it's funny I haven't heard from her in a while. She, uh, she's uh she's been going through a lot since that battle. Um Oh, did you say Broomhilda was in the shadow? I'm sorry, I missed the mistake. Yeah. Uh let's say you say it right then there. I'm sorry. Uh uh, uh Broomhilda was in the shadow fell? Why? I I don't know why. Um, I assume that when we were poofed away, that's just where she was thrown to or cast to, I guess. Can you do me a favor? Um, when Brumhild is available, can you have her contact me? I would very much like to check in on her and see uh, how she's doing. Uh, that is uh, actually Wilbur. How is she doing? Well, um, not well, um, but she's taking a nice long nap right now. Um, Good. Oh. Um. Paul, uh, is her father? And she's really been struggling with that. Has she known since Shadowfell or before that? Uh, to, to my knowledge, just since Shadowfell. Does anyone she else know 
Except for the mongoose crew? Uh, yep. New Moon. Uh, New Moon knows. They heard it. Um, yeah, basically he, uh, he addressed her as daughter right before the battle ensued. Um, Wilbur, I mean, this probably goes without saying, but I need to remind you of something very important. Make sure you do everything in your power to keep this information to yourself. I know. Um, I think all of the mongoose crew knows. Um, Please pass along that message because there are some entities that would very much like to have that knowledge. And that could be very harmful for her. Um, yeah, maybe, um, maybe we should get a hold of New Moon because I, I don't know if they know to keep that under wraps. I would do that. We want to keep those that are in the heavens in the heavens. Do you know of anyone in Celeste that would aim to hurt Broomhilda? No. But you and I both know that she is one that can be hard to accept. That's a nice way of putting it. Thank you. You don't sound very surprised by everything I just told you. I've been alive for a very long time, Hooper. I'm sure you've seen and heard a lot then. That I have. Well, I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated. Um, I hope that your friends can help find Willis and get Willis safely back to the grove. I am doing everything I can and I will continue to try to reach out to them now even more so to politely explain the situation. But you and I both know Wilbur, and I care just as much for Brumhilda as I do for you and everyone else in the grove. No, I, I know you do. I, I think you two have a very special relationship. As I do with you. I know you didn't know I was around all the time, but I was still there. Is there anything else that you want me to tell Broomhilda besides have her contact you? Um, she's probably going to be, well, no, she was kind of over it. She didn't really want us to 
get you involved with this. I think she's just worried about your safety and all of this, but... Is there anything else you want me to tell her? Just look out for her. She... She can be somewhat self-destructive at times. She's always been that way, and I can't imagine what she's going through now that she knows. You've always known, haven't you? I knew that he wasn't. Um, speaking of Cerulius, um, any chance that you've heard from him, heard anything about him? No. But that's not out of the ordinary. It might not be my place to say, but I would say contacting Cerulius at this time may be a mistake. Why? Do you, do you think he knows? I don't know if he does, but... If you find out that you're disappointment of a father is not your father. It doesn't make that man any less of a disappointment. I don't think it was his fault, though. I didn't say it was. I just know how she would take it. I feel really sad for her. Yeah. But she's an adult. She needs to learn how to handle her own emotions. All of us. I don't think she's ever been well equipped to do that. I don't mean that by any offense to you, of course. Um, no, not at all. We all are equipped. Well, we're, we all have the tools. We just need to learn how to use them. I just feel so sad for her. I know. But one thing that we could do is to help her feel better by making sure that the worst thing in her life is deep, deep, deep down in the earth, past the soil where there is no hope for any piece of him to give nutrients to anything else.
You said such strong words in such a calm voice. I've been told that I can seem creepy about that at times. Uh, the hairs on the back of Wilbur's little <laughs> scruff stand on edge. <laughs> yeah. His hackles. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't think you're creepy. Um. Deception check. Come on. Oh, 11. Natural two. <laughs> it's the same die, too. I'm going to put that up. You're done. Well, hopefully when Broomhilda wakes up, she's uh, in a little bit of a better mood. She um, She's a little upset at Aldrin right now. Why? Uh, because we've all been, you know, reaching out to people to, you know, recruit help against fighting tall and um, Eldrin reached out to someone she probably shouldn't have um, no shouldn't have uh, that person wasn't on our list and um, there's some concern that the person she reached out to is I don't know if it's tall or another evil person inhabiting that person. Well, I don't know. She heard a voice she didn't recognize. Well, can't say anything to that choice. But I think it would be good to remember that the response that Brumhilda is probably having to that is at least influenced by her priorities which are which were choices that were made for her not the healthiest. But, I mean, at least she made her point clear so that there wasn't anyone else who would have done that. No. <laughs> You're going to carry that 11 deception check. Uh, Wilbur doesn't know. Oh, Wilbur doesn't know. You're right. Well, it's good speaking with you, Wilbur. I am I uh, need to go feed the, uh, well, you know. Thank you for looking after the Grove and for all of your hard work tracking down the missing wombats. I appreciate it, but you never have to thank me for that. I feel like I owe a lot of thank yous to you, but I've never known that you deserved, I guess. We don't always get what we deserve. And that goes both ways. Please tell my family I said hi. And Wally. I will. Be safe, Wilbur. You too. And you end the call. All right. Uh, Wilbur, you walk out to the room. Um, 
At this point, I would say it's been probably about a solid hour. Uh, there is no sign of Eldrin uh, yet at all. Uh, you've not heard from uh, Noros either. Uh, but uh, as we uh, gear up for that, uh, is there anything else you guys wanted to do before that? Saren wants to at some point see if Huxley has a response. Whether that be like to go back into the room and be like, so what is it? Uh, I'm going to say that uh, it's uh, at this point, it's about like three o'clock or whatever. Um, you have not received a response yet. Can she go back in the room and see? Sure. Yeah. You go back in the room. Ah, well, um, Saren, was there something you forgot to say to the people on your list? Um, I just, I just wanted to see if the first person I contacted had anything to say yet. See if he thought about it. It. Well, let me close the door for you. We're going to cut from you to Eldrin. Oh. Eldrin comes down from uh, the um, the chicken hut stairs or whatever um, and mm -hmm. walks uh, far enough away from the house but like she can still see it. And um, I'm sure Noros is close behind, but Eldrin um, is, when he comes over, she's just um, tracing with her foot in the dirt um, a really, really big square, um, and then puts in the middle of it um, a, a little uh, holy symbol of persona. Okay. Um, and as she, as she feels him come closer, she, she says very matter-of-factly, he can tell she's angry, but he also, I think he can tell when she shuts it down. <laughs> um, yeah, he's going to, he's going to walk up and just go, uh, hi, honey. What are you doing? Um, well, first of all, I'm, I'm not the right, uh, not the right person for this. Um, any of this, I actually, I think that, I think the Mongoose crew, I gotta hate that name. I, they would be much better off, uh without me, but um I've almost told me before when I when I make mistakes that I need to not wallow and I need to fix them. So that's what I'm going to do. Um and Eldrin, as she's talking to uh um Nora, she's also doing something with her hand. Um and then um she's muttering in between what she's saying to Noros in primordial just like scripture and things like that. Um, and she says, um, I was never supposed to be in this position. You know that. Uh, I'm, I'm not made to, I wasn't trained for any of this, to how to talk to people. That was his area and, and. And, and we let him out of our sight for a minute. One minute and he's gone and he's being tortured. And I don't care what it takes. I have to, I ha we have to save him. Because he would, he would do anything in his power to save me. And I don't care what everyone's saying up there. He's not possessed. There, there was someone else in the room with him. And that person is powerful enough to be able to to intercept a ascending spell. So that probably means they can they can watch us or scry on us. And so I, I'm I'm making a place where that can't happen. And yes, we won't have the sending room, but at least we will have an area where we can we can use our bracelets and we can contact the people that we need to contact and know that no one can listen in. 
and as I'm saying that, he sees like walls starting to form mm-hmm. slowly because it takes an hour. Um, I don't know if he says anything while this is happening. He doesn't. He doesn't really say anything for a minute. You're right. I mean, I usually am, but what are you referring to in this moment? We're not going to win this. If we don't... From what I gather from Tall, he doesn't... He doesn't have... He doesn't seem to have weaknesses. He doesn't seem to have uh, things that are important to him that are that are physical. He seems like a true psychopath and only pretending to have feelings about something and he seems to be extremely powerful and there's apparently multiple forms of him and uh, uh, and followers that seem to be at many times have beaten us Uh, I lost my train of thought for a second um oh but we have something that i'm not someone who believes in the storybook idea of Because something is right, you will always win. But we have something that is way more worth fighting for. Power, knowledge, whatever he's looking for is only going to get him so far and is only going to make him so strong. We need to remember why we're doing this. We need to be careful. And we need to be together. And for those reasons, I love you, but I think they are right to be upset. But I don't think what you did was wrong. So. So if you... If you think we need to do what we need to do and it's against what the group, what the mongoose crew, I don't hate it. It's not, you know, I get, I, if you and I need to do everything we can to save Almos. We do it. We be smart. We try to include our friends, our loved ones as much as we can. But you're right. How much longer does this have to take? Um, 
It takes about an hour. Do you, um, is there a verbal component to it? Yes. Can it take two hours then? I guess so, yeah. Walks towards you, fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you putting up? Uh, Temple of the Gods. It means Temple that no gods. one so can, uh, no, it's a seventh level spell. Uh, <laughs> no Hell one yeah. can come in unless I have invited them, and the only person I'm inviting in is Noros. Um, Wilbur actually is the other creature that I, w that I will allow to be able to open the door, but if they're not Noros or Wilbur, no one else can open the door. Um, cool. They're not going to tell Wilbur that. <laughs> um, and um, their divination spells don't work in there, like on us, so we can't be scryed on or um, that kind of stuff. And... Um, it's basically just a simple temple to persona, and it probably looks like the temple in um, Anoria, but a smaller version of it. Okay, cool. Love it. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So, um, cutting back, uh, about an hour has passed since Eltrin has gone. Uh, you all are... Uh, you all are... Uh, what's Quar doing? I think Gore's probably trying to give people space. I mean, he sees Milo relaxing on the the chair, reading. Uh, sees Saren go back into the descending room. Uh, Wilbur's just, I would imagine, hanging out somewhere. I think Gore would take his tea and, like, go... I would imagine there's some sort of terrace somewhere. Um... And just kind of lean on the railing of the terrace, sipping his tea, watching the temple go up. And just like, I think, I think feeling sad for Eldrin, because I think, I think in light of what he was thinking about, like the far as like you know, like realizing he doesn't really have a lot of people to love outside of the group. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking about how Eldrin does. Um. But also, like the just thinking about the 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 burden. Like I'm free of my burden because I'm a traitor. So like I'm not tasked with like ruling over anyone. Mm -hmm. and I think I'm, I think Gwar's finally thinking about that sort of thing, and and uh, trying to I don't know empathize, but also like yeah, I'm not going down there right now. But I just want to make sure she's okay. Is that it, I am I am still Gwar. So yeah. Uh, you, um, uh, <laughs> uh, you notice that, uh, a temple is starting to, uh, is starting to raise up and then all of a sudden there's a pause and, uh, that's out of concern for a second as you notice that there hasn't been any. And then there's something that just, just tells you exactly what's going on. Um, and then you're like, oh, okay. Uh, and you go, you walk over to another window. <laughs> um, as you, uh, as you, as you walk over to the other window, give me a perception check. Natural 20. Natural 20. Uh, that's a 25. 25. You see uh how the light is shining you know it's three o'clock so it's 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 kind of coming to a point where it's actually you're you're now the sun's kind of like a little bit in your eyes um but you're able to kind of like you know put yourself in the corner of the window where you're you're not like immediately getting hit with it and you see light seeming to shine on the ground in another direction just another sort of side. Uh, it seems to be showing and reflecting 
through some trees that are off in the distance. Uh, and you're, um, you're not sure what that's about. So just some light shining through the trees. From a different direction, it looks right. like natural light, but it's from a it's from the opposite. You know how the sun moves and sets. Right, right. There's uh, uh, for everyone, uh, for all my players that are listening. There's one sun. Um, uh, uh, it's we, not we a had Tatooine a, situation. Okay. It's not a Tatooine situation. Uh, uh, there are no thirty-seven moons, um, but yeah. Uh, well, that seems weird. Uh, can can I perceive it anymore, or try to like do some sort of insight? Or okay, nineteen is pretty dang good. And I'll say what you yeah. notice is that light seems to be reflecting on the trees. Kind of like try to like look for a source, which you can't from your vantage point of the window. I notice harder. Uh, okay. You notice um, harder. You see the same. Okay. Um, who has better vision than Guar? Would Milo have better vision than Guar? Would um, I'm going to remind you, 19 is a very good roll. I know, but he can get a 21. Okay, um, so I think Guar would probably like not want to leave the house, mm-hmm. but not leave Eldrin out of eye shot. Well, incident notwithstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, so we would have gone behind something. God. Yeah, yeah but he knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's already accused of being gross once today, so... Mm-hmm. Um, so, so he's going to wait and watch. So, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm watching the light. <laughs> he's at the other side window. of the house now. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> he's already been accused of being gross once. He might as well just lean in. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> He is trying to be lawful good after all. Mm-hmm. Trying. Um, I think you would just like clock that for a, a minute uh, just to kind of see if there's any more evidence of it. And uh, this is something you'd want to bring up to Broomhilda for sure. Um, and I think I would, like, who would be the closest person in the house to me right now? Would it be Milo? Like, in the uh, Milo's room? in the kitchen. Okay. With Dinah. I was just thinking that. That was the dumbest joke I ever said in my life. I was like, now I'm not going to say it. That was so dumb. Here's more psychic damage. Yeah, take that psychic damage. (laughs) That's a D8. Um, We just lost a a subscriber from that. I get it. (laughs) We're down below 200 again. Um, I get it. (laughs) uh, Like, somebody would probably be relatively nearby, right? Anybody at this point. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> Actually, truly, you look at him. There's no one there. There's nobody there. <laughs> Why am I the only one that sees this shit? God damn it. Okay, well, uh, so I think he would just, like, cl- clock that and try to pay attention to it. Because um, I don't really, like I said, I, I don't think War would want to leave the house to go ex- 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 uh, look at it or, or try to find out what it is by himself. Yeah, So no, totally fair. Um, so I hope you're impressed because this is the first time you're seeing Elden use a seventh level spell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Guar knows the seventh level spell either, though. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. Also, uh, I really I'm want Guar just... to be like she can make a house. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she could do this the entire time. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, the love of his life did create a sentient house. True. Right. True. Bef- while we were sleeping. I do it faster, though, because, you know, mine only takes an hour. So. Hey. <laughs> if you do it right, all right. Um, <laughs> uh, we cut to Saren in the room. Uh, Saren, you hear Marvin go, um, okay, well, you know the rules, so whenever you're ready. So, Huxley, do you have an answer for me? No answer. Um, Marvin, uh, I know Eldrin kind of got in trouble for, you know, going off the list, 
but uh if Arma it interrupts was, and just goes just do it i i mean it's it's for you know i i want to recruit somebody sure. and the, the group hasn't met them they probably aren't you know possessed or anything so it it i think it should be fine i mean well, i don't i don't want to wake broomhilda up and you won't let us so can't really ask you know this this is what Guar gets for trying to help a friend. I mean, she did need sleep, so. I know that. And, and more importantly, Guar knows that. Um, okay. <laughs> Sure, Marvin. So, so, <laughs> so are we good? I don't know what to say. I do need to relay this information to Brumhilda. I was specifically given very specific instructions to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't say anything too crazy. Uh, she'll, I don't care if she's mad at me. She's mad at everybody right now. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the talking thing now. Um, Lucia, it's, it's Saren. I know it's, I know it's been a while, but if you remember me. Uh, Saren. Doesn't ring a bell. Could you be more specific? Saren, like the the one you saved. Honey, I'm kidding. Of course, I know it's you. Okay, I was I was hoping. Um, Who so could forget? I I could never. I know that. Um, how are how are you and Jack doing? Oh, well, you know, the, we're good, you know, sailing the seas, doing the whole pirate thing. We got a bigger bed. Good, good to know. Um, it's when you take a uh, you take a king size bed and two queen size beds, and you kind of put them together to one side of the room. It's, it's interesting. useful. Um, are you guys in Imea still, by any chance? Oh no, honey, we are way south of Imea. Did down there? Did you uh, hear a a voice in your head? No, what voice? Okay, this this might be slightly harder to explain than um there's this let's just say big evil creature entity something. Babe, are you trying to enlist me? Maybe. Okay. Well, what's the take? Um lots probably lots of things to kill. Uh gold Gold if you want. Um, gold, gold, gold if I want. Uh, I mean, rum? can you give me a roundabout? You're getting warmer. Me? Uh, you're pretty warm. I need to make it profitable for the crew, too. Well, we we have some other mercenaries that we're hiring, and uh, the the person in charge of we want the... double. Okay, I, I'm sure we can do that. There's, I'm friends with the princess now, and um, princess. I should I be jealous? No, no, she's married. She doesn't remember that at the moment. Uh, okay. But... I well yeah she's 
I she's not gonna no. No. Alright, well. Alright, you're presenting me with another challenge. Got it. I mean, there will be thirty big mercenary dudes on board, so Man, they're getting boring. <laughs> I I promise it it'll be exciting. Okay. A new, a new adventure for you guys and, and the crew. Well, let me uh, talk it over with Jack. Uh, getting to I may uh, uh, when a you know what uh, when abouts would you need me? I know when you want me. When would you need me? We we don't really have a timeline at the moment, but. Uh, we can, we can get to you, um, if you want to just, if you get to Imeo whenever you can, uh, I can, I can keep in contact, um, and we can, we can come pick you up somewhere. Uh, we do have some people meeting us north of, of Grifton, not sure if you made it that far in. Grifton. Mm, is that around Nova Soul? Yeah, I, I believe it's north of Nova Soul. That place was a real bummer, man. I, I remember going there. The fruit was good, but the, the brothel was eh. It was. It was okay. Did you meet the Tiefling duo by any chance? No. What? Oh man, you really missed out. I missed out. Okay, that's the reason. Another reason, Lisa, tell Jack. Jack, you big fan. I will talk to Jack and let you know. Okay, that sounds good. It would be a pleasure to see you guys. Any message you want me to send his way? Just, just tell him I'm looking forward to seeing him, too. Okay. Okay. I don't know how much he'll be paying attention. I will probably not be wearing clothes when I say that to him. We'll also be looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. All right. I'll see you soon. Hopefully. I hope so. Click. Uh, Marvin... Dude. Ooh, Go gross. Ahead. Joe made me flirt with him. Yo. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I was uh, playing a female. I don't know. Um, okay. uh, it's not that bad. It's not it's not that bad. Hey, why did why did I hear that from Mike, Mike before my know. wife? <laughs> I mean, I literally needed to make sure that when I went to the Shadowfell, I forgot that I was fake married to Joe. <laughs> so <laughs> I think part of being the DM's wife is just accepting that he's going to flirt with a lot of different people mm -hmm. throughout any session. But not as Joe, unless it's Mike. I love that unless she's ending. I love that she's ending it there. But that's that's gonna unless it's happen. Mike. Unless it's Mike, then it's yeah. legit flirting. Yeah. It's <laughs> uh, funny. Uh, Cool. Uh, uh, Marvin goes, okay. Some of those things I didn't quite understand, but I will, that's not for me to understand, so. Marvin, I think you, oh, never mind. Maybe Guarin, never, no. <laughs> and she just walks out. Ah. You walk out. Uh, you see Guar. I think you see Guar standing in the hallway. I truly think, like Guar, you're waiting for someone to be able to interact with. Uh, yeah, there's no sure. one there. Yeah, I'm just a broken sim. Yeah, just like walking into the wall. <laughs> yeah. Once my tower is done, can I can I reach out to one person on my list? Yes, you can. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, how did it go? Um. Well, Huxley. Still no response. Not surprised no, there. No, uh, that's not surprising. Hopefully he remembers he has a sending stone so he can contact me if he needs to. But um I mean anything's possible at this point, aren't isn't it? I 
And Who did we you might, talk to? Um, uh, we might have some other uh, people helping us. Um, uh, nobody that's, like, you know, possessed or anything. Uh, Broomhilda's not awake. What What was I supposed to do? Are they um, trustworthy? Yeah, I mean, they're pirates. But, yeah. I'd say so. Uh, From personal experience. Do we have oh. to pay them? Do we have to pay them, too? Yeah, they said they want double of what uh, Merc's guys are getting. P- please, but like Broomhilda's magic, so she can just like you know make sure, some gold or please, something, please right? Forgive me. I mean, you were you did reach out to Huxley to help us, so forgive me if I'm not quite sure about the reliability of some of your recruits. Well, they've they've never held a gun to a child, so I I think they're a little more trustworthy. I mean, Huxley's been on a ship with a low bar, pirates Sarah. too, so that's a low bar. <laughs> You're, that's fair. Oh my god, my favorite line of the night. Are they trustworthy? Well, they're pirates, um, so <laughs> but they've never held a gun to a child's head. Uh, I think Guar, for multiple reasons, you've never had to fight with pirates. I actually like full on think one Delver doesn't have a navy. Like, why would they? Um, no, not at all. But you've heard countless stories of like the authenticity of pirates, mm-hmm. um, which are, which is zero. Um, they're they're pirates. Um, so yeah, for sure. Yeah, uh, Guar's not feeling super great right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, he saw the glittery light that didn't match the sunlight, and and Eldrin's building the house apart from everybody else, and. <laughs> Rumhilda thinks I drugged her, and and Saren's recruiting pirates, and no one's listening to me. This sucks. And, and who knows where Milo is? No, Milo's <laughs> reading, right? Yeah. Milo's um, throwing up breakfast drink. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, this is the craziest platoon I've ever led. Oh. Bahamut, will you give me something? Man. Uh, I just want to do good deeds. I just want to help. I want to save this fucking world. I've grown accustomed to it. I like it. Uh, you say, Bahama, uh, Bahama, I wish you would help me, uh, like, show me something, and you hear a crack of lightning. I've been something positive, and I run to the window. Cool. Saren follows him. Uh, Sarah, only perception check. Twenty two. Nice. You see what Guar saw. Random glittery light. So, okay, so you're seeing that too, right? Is is that your dragon gods doing? I sure hope so. I don't know. I. What do you mean? I'm so tired. I know it's the middle of the day, but I'm just in, I'm just drained, and I just want some direction, and I want to fight something, and I want to defeat them, and I want Broomhilda to like me again, and I just, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, I'm venting, I'm sorry, I'm venting. <clears throat> well, I'd ask if you were okay, but I'm gonna go with probably not great. Uh, are any of us okay, Saren? You're recruiting pirates. No, uh, no not at all. I heard that belch down the hall a little while ago. Uh, I know Milo's probably not feeling great. I smelled it. Oh, God. It smelled like... Yeah, it was truly awful. Cut to Milo just unfolding a newspaper where he's at. <laughs> just chilling. Where, where did Wilbur go? Is he still in the in the war room? Yeah, you guys are in the war room now. Um, yeah, I guess... Why did I think Wilbur wasn't there? I feel what? like we were walking oh. back. <laughs> we're just you were on the nap. table this yeah. whole time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Or he was on the table. And he's just the same color as the table. He was just <laughs> red in a little ball. I've been here the whole time. Are you all right? I just, I was just, I, I just started venting to Saren, and I feel bad. I just unloaded on Saren about how stressed out I am about all this. Uh, at least when I had, what did Merc call them? Meat shields. I mean, 
at least people just listened to me and did what I said, and then it was fine. But you know, I, I don't want to do that to any of you because you're so valuable to me. I, I can't just tell you what to do and you just go do it. What have I done wrong? Nothing. You're great. You. You, you haven't done anything, Wilbur. I'm just, I'm glad you're here. And I just, I saw this glittery light out the window and I heard a crackle of lightning and what? I'm just worried that something's coming to attack us or something. What and glittery I just... light? What? Where? Over, out the window, over there. Yeah, there's light that's going, uh, not from the sun, but it looks like the sun. I don't know what it is, honestly. Can I get a boost? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, climb up on my shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> I will ever give me a perception check. I just want Wilbur to put glasses on, like. <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> uh, twenty-five. Uh, yeah, you see, um, you see what everyone else sees. You said you heard something. Well, I heard it. I heard a. Uh, you didn't hear the the the, the thunder. No. Did you hear? Did you hear the thunder? Well, no, I just saw it you... was belching again. No, Gor did ask for a sign from Bahamut, and then it thundered. So I think that was kind of on him. Yeah, but I don't know what it means. Is that your dude? Is That's that your... kind of your job, Gwar. Well, he's <laughs> been very much clearer than this before. Well, should we just go out there and see what it is? I mean. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Let's go. Look. Um, now that you're, we're all together, I, I feel better about that. I'm, Milo, Where's you Eldred? you want to take a walk? <laughs> Milo's on a there. completely different floor. <laughs> oh, okay, my bad. Are we, are we sure we want to leave? You while... you hear yeah, another it's... raucous belch <laughs> <laughs> from the second floor, like Just from the, the end of the hallway, <laughs> second floor, yeah. passing oh. all the 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 knocking pans, oh. and followed by oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The best part, uh, Aldrin's down there. She's like, "I'm gonna fix this. I'm gonna do something good." And Milo's just <laughs> <laughs> it's like, "Jamie, Milo's having a good experience. morning. He called his mom. He got some. He got some business Oof. calls out of the way. Now he's he reading the paper and, drink, and drinking his breakfast drink <laughs> that he and... hasn't had in a very long time." Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Uh, so, are you guys going down? Yeah. Cool. You got it. Uh, cool. As you guys uh, head down, we uh, cut back to Eldrin. Um, uh, oh, so, uh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Much more relaxed. Um, Much more relaxed. They, yeah. Eldrin finishes um, the, the temple and um, invites Noros inside um, mm -hmm. and says, um, explains it to him. Um, and she's like, I've never done this before. I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, but we should be safe in here i mean nothing can get in i, I, I can make it so celestials fey undead uh, elementals they can't come in it's even attached to the ethereal plane so nothing can pl plane or travel in here either it's amazing anyway i don't know if you understood everything i just said i but you everything you every everything you just said what I did a really awesome thing. Okay. Uh, uh, no insight check needed. Uh, uh, everything you're saying is like, no one could see us. No one can like, like we could do whatever what? we want. <laughs> and then I say, also it is a temple to persona. So please be respectful. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. Yep. Um, I'm just so... saying is we all, okay. Um, Eldrin you is, see him is grumbling gonna, in the corner. Yeah, Eldrin's gonna sit down on on one of the the pews that she's made, um, and um, oh. open up her shell phone. You, you got it. Make comfortable seating. As you nope, uh, uh, and as you like sit, <laughs> as you sit down, you actually notice that like it rocks a little bit. So you stop what you're doing and then like go and try to like yeah. finish like the, like you put you you do the equivalent yeah, of putting and, the piece of paper under the and I say, and I was like it would have been more perfect but you distracted me um so next time yeah you know I mean persona is, it's, I mean he's a super accepting god I'm just saying I 
I, I get that, but I mean, again, can we can we first like get this task done? Apparently, we're newlyweds, so that's all I'm saying. But yeah, no, I'll go outside. No, stay in here. I can't. I think I need to go outside. Okay. I'll talk it's to just Karen it's so it, we no one could hear us. This is all right. Never stopped us before, so it's not I, like yeah. I guess I don't know. okay. You're right. <laughs> I, was getting, I, was, I don't know what's getting all into you, but okay. eventually he calms down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Eldrin gives him like a like a holy symbol, and she's like, "Just say some prayers," um, and then opens the shell phone. <laughs> Brutal. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just gonna tell you that doesn't do it. Um, go ahead. You're you're up. No, it's okay. Like um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, not the only thing that's up. Um, hey. So, <laughs> she opens up the shell phone and waits for. Uh, he said, again, I, elder- he, did, he does say he's like you know I fell in love with a cleric right like there's a like okay. that doesn't help. Okay. Yeah. Evan, pray away your simple thoughts. Um, Eldrin, again, not giving any warning to Karen, is just assuming this man <laughs> is waiting for her to, right. to call. So, right. yep, she's just sitting there, has it open. She's actually sitting, like, probably there's, like, a, a chair at the front where the altar is and stuff. So it looks really cool behind her. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And she, she opens it. She, she kind of puts it on the altar so she can see it. And waits. Okay. And she and if it. he doesn't if he doesn't respond in like a few, a minute, she's gonna send do a sending to him and be like, "Hey, get on the phone." <laughs> get on the phone. <laughs> uh, cool. No. Uh, yeah, he completely gets on. Um. Oh. Uh, hi. Uh, pr- uh princess. No. Uh. Nope. Just. Uh. It's just. Uh. It's a crazy time in Eisenheim. Um. How can? Are you in a secure location? Never. What? Can you get to a secure location? Sure. Yeah. Are you inebriated right now? Hmm. I have you... your. Um. I have your stuff. That is wonderful. Actually, that's. That actually is one of the things I was going to ask you. Um. So. Where can my mother meet you um, to retrieve my belongings and uh, my brother's body? Well, currently my office is uh, well. It's pretty close to. Um, it's in Colville. Um, it's pretty close to. Okay. A, um, it's like right next to a. Uh, it's right next to a tavern called Bitch Brew. Yeah, I know. We, we've talked about this tavern uh, before. Oh, great. It's really Are you close. all right? Hmm? Are you all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there any way you can make it into Midtown or, uh, you know, the, the capital proper? Actually, no, it's probably best that you don't do that with the dead body and contraband. Um, okay. Absolutely. So, can you meet my mother at the Bitches Brew? That'll be a fun conversation of telling. Oh, right I'm gonna have to. It's gonna be hard to uh, roll me a uh, perception check or investigation check. You're looking at a specific thing. Um, twenty four. Twenty four. Uh, he's in the bitches, bro. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I told him that's where he should be taking calls. So, Elder and yeah. Ben is a- well, but he's still pretending it's not like. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I'll have to. Um, I don't know how well this, how good this reception is going to do outside going all the way there. Well, um, Karen, hmm? I know you're in the, I know you, I'm the one that told you to take the calls in the bitches brew. I'm the one that told you to move yeah. your operation there because sure. it is a more secure location. You yeah. don't need to, although now they're seeing you in the state that you're in, maybe having you so close to the vicinity of alcohol wasn't the best decision. No, my my office is it's close. It's very close to. Um, you know what? Yeah, it's just... I will have my mother meet you there. Okay. Um, here is. What does uh, she look like? She looks like me, but angrier, more severe. Okay. Yeah. And she'll probably have a, 
a, a few guards with her as well. Scary. I apologize in advance for anything she may say to you or um, insinuate or judge you for or, you know. Well, but anyway. What, uh, what, she, would, she, what would she judge me for? She just can be a little... I mean, I know that I come off like, you know, really, really kind. And uh, and I look at Nora because I know I don't. And, and, I, and I smile at him and I say, and just really understanding. But um, my mom's kind of um, a little bit, a little bit more severe. Mm. Okay. Well, I'll, anyway. uh, I'll make sure I have put on my best shirt. Okay, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Um, I do want to let you know that I am eternally grateful to you for keeping um, Kanos's body safe and helping facilitate its return to Honoria. Um, it it. Is... Thank you, Karen. Um, and I don't, I don't wish to inconvenience you any further. But... No, nah, shoot. Since, okay, well, since um, I feel as if our... Um, our relationship, our working relationship is coming to an end. Um, so if you also feel that we have no more use of this device to, to communicate, um, my mother will be happy to purchase this item off of you because it would be uh -huh. extremely beneficial if I had a direct line to Honoria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, um, I kind of am renting these right now. Well, didn't Broomhilda give them to you? Uh, no. I thought she did because it was her Tresum that sent them. No, you're you're mistaken. Okay, well, you're renting them. Can you just purchase them instead with the money that my mother gives you? Um, I mean, you're still, you know, you're still kind of. We we still got a case. I mean, I would hope. I mean, I guess I've been taught not to underestimate the stupidity of mankind, but I would hope that Absolutely. the king has more um, important things to worry about than the false case against me. Who knows? King could be really stupid. Well, regardless, my mother will come and meet with you, retrieve that which belongs to us, and mm -hmm. pay you for the services that you've already rendered to um, us. Um, and she will know Great. more about the case because she has been with the king for the past few days. Um, but I would greatly appreciate it if you would allow us to buy the, um, the second shell off of you. I mean, I'll talk to my guy, but... I mean... Okay. That would, it would it would be wonderful and Honoria would be forever grateful. Got it. I will, you know, who knows? Maybe well, something will happen. You'll need me again. And it'll be a good thing that you have it around. No, I mean, yes, you have been an immense help. Uh, I thank you. As I said, um, mm. I just also, um, when my mother comes here to meet with you, I may need her to um, use the this device so I can speak with her. Oh, um, sure. Okay. I will reach out to her uh, and, and send her your way. Hopefully within the next day or two, she'll be there. Preferably within the next 24 hours so that I can speak with her while I'm in the location that I am in. Hey, you know, uh, humankind, you never know. Yeah, my mom. Well, we're Tritons, but that's fine. Right. Trit Triton kind. Triton kind. Works. Okay, well. All right, then. Soap her up. Uh, you're about to meet the Queen of Anoris. <laughs> okay. I shut the, the phone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just. <laughs> well, and I look at Norris, I says, I went about as well as I thought it was going to go. Yeah, we're not going to use him again after this, right? No, 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 no. Yeah. I mean, cool. very useful, very useful. But if we can get this, um, if we can get this device, the, the other half of it to Honoria, that would be. Kind of got, kind of got the feeling that like, like 
if we need him for like illegal things, he'd be more useful. Oh yes, one hundred percent. And if we need that, I can just reach out to him. Yeah, makes sense. What's uh, what's going on out there? Um, you now we cut to Guar, Sarah, and Wilbur coming down from the uh, uh, coming down from the uh, the uh, from Marvin from the mansion. Uh, Eldrin, do you go out to to meet them? Sorry, um, it's okay. No, Eldrin is planning on reaching out to her mother. Cool, you got it. So yeah, so you stay there, um, and we won't be able to. Obviously, we'll That's we'll fine. hold off on that yeah. on that. But yeah, so cool. All right. Uh, so yeah, Guar, Saren, uh, and Wilbur, you uh, go out, and uh, are you just heading straight over to where that light is? I, I think proceeding with caution. Cool. It's fair to say. Got it. Guar, do yeah. you know why there's a temple out here? Oh, oh yeah, Eldrin made it. Uh, she was mad. I think she probably just like was, uh, it seems like a very much like a uh, uh, no non Tritons allowed vibe. Uh, it's a clubhouse you know, where we can't, no one can go in but her and Nora. <laughs> she she rage built the house. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she, huh? She's very mad. Uh, so I I just uh, I assume none of us can get in. Uh, well, I don't know. Wilbur, you pretty, can probably get in. Pretty impressive. She always gives you preferential treatment. Yeah, Wilbur, you should try. No, I mean, she needs some space. I'm just going to let her have some space. It's fine. All right. Uh, well, are, are you still seeing that light? Yeah. I, I, I don't think we should go too far, but... Um, I agree. We can, we can go check it out. As you walk towards it... Um, Cautiously. Oh man, it's that music. You notice that the uh, the light shining through the canopy seems to push out to being in this sort of weird open glade area. As you all are standing there, you don't You don't see anything but that light, but you notice the twinkling seeming to kind of come through almost as if there was like, uh, like, you know, like those like tiny, like sort of like dust particles in the air that seem to kind of represent where that's coming in. You see, uh, it's almost like a spotlight, like it's not perfectly like spherical, but it seems like it's. The closer you get, the more it's very clear that it's not natural. Gwar looks up to kind of like see if the trajectory, to see if it's like coming from anything. Looking through trees, you can see like there's a, there's a ray, but it's hard to tell now that you're kind of in the forest. Do you think? This looks like I mean, fireflies. It's weird. I, it, I mean, it doesn't look ominous in any way. That hopefully that's a good sign. Should yeah, I I, I, I wouldn't mind getting a little closer. Um, How close you get? I wouldn't recommend touching any of the the trees though. I'm not going into it. I just want to get closer. Yeah, the cause we're we're still in the North Iman woods, right? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, the ran into a giant tree. I I gave it a shiny rock, and I think we're friends now. Oh. Um, you're in a, you're in a you're a million miles away from where you were, but yes, you're still in the quote unquote mm-hmm. North Iman woods. Yes. She uh, doesn't know. Right, yeah, and that's that's very valid. Uh, also, who knows? But, Could we reach out to him in the sending room? Um, I don't. You, you, you don't know have his a name, name <laughs> so I don't. Right, right. I don't think so. Uh-huh. Uh, so just just be nice to the forest, and we we should be oh. fine. Oh, of course, of course, and we yeah yeah I, I yeah uh, I, I think War would get closer. I think like within 
maybe like 15 feet. Quara, as you get closer, you hear this sort of whispering sound, like almost sounds like multiple voices trying to converse with you. Do these voices sound creepy or do they sound like just talking? Do they sound... They sound like what you heard. Okay. Did you hear that? Saren will get closer to. Heard something. Uh, You actually, both of you do not hear anything. Oh. Never mind. That was just the wind. Yeah, I... I still see it, but I don't hear anything. War gets five feet closer. Whispers get close, get louder. Can I make out what they're saying yet? Roll me a perception check. Uh, that is a 13. I'm not sure. You feel like you would understand if it was one voice, but it sounds like it's multiple. I'm going in. So you go in. Stay here. You walk in. And you feel the light around you. It feels warm as the sun would. You hear the voices. Guar. Hi. I'm back. And with that, we're going to end tonight's session. Hey! Yay! We love you guys. We will see you next week. Bye-bye.